Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Pokemon. Takuya Saga at the Beginning. Chapter 21. After leaving the Pokemon Academy, we saw the sea. Bulbasaur had almost fully recovered and joined the training team. He was the fastest to improve. Of course, there were various battles along the way. The most surprising thing was that Weedle evolved into Iron Shell Kun, and Nidoran and Male Sign evolved into Nidorino. Nidorino not only learned to protect and shadow ball by himself, but also learned flamethrower from Charizard. Shao I always asked Takuya why he could carry so many Pokemon. Takuya could only helplessly tell Shao I that he asked Professor Oak to modify the number of Pokemon he carried. Takuya's first Pokemon, Lucario, Charmeleon, Pudigiato, Iron Shell Kun, Nidorino, Magikarp, Sandshrew, Bulbasaur. After walking along the beach for a long time, Takuya and his friends saw a lighthouse standing on the edge of the cliff. The light tube flickered and guided the direction in the vast sea. Shao I, there is a lighthouse in front. Let's go and take a look. Maybe we can spend the night there tonight. Takuya said. Shao I nodded, and soon came to the lighthouse and knocked on the door. Excuse me, is anyone there? Takuya shouted. After knocking three more times, someone finally came to open the door. The small iron door creaked open, and then Takuya saw someone familiar with him again, and the person who opened the door was Ash. Ah, Takuya, why are you here too? Ash asked in surprise. We just wanted to find a place to stay overnight, and I didn't expect that we are so destined. Takuya smiled. Ash, if they are your acquaintances, let them in. A voice came from the lighthouse. Okay, Professor Bill. Ash replied. Professor Bill. Could this be the Bill Lighthouse? Takuya suddenly thought of Bill as a famous professor. Walking into the lighthouse, Xiao Gang and Misty were also there. They were cooking, and there was a man in a research suit sitting in front of the phone and talking to Professor Oak on the other end of the phone. They were talking to each other, and Takuya wanted to say hello, but seeing that the two were chatting so enthusiastically, he didn't interrupt. Instead, Professor Oak suddenly saw Takuya. Takuya, why are you here too? Bill then realized that there was someone standing behind him. Long time no see Professor Oak. I couldn't find a place to stay overnight, so I came here. I may have to trouble Professor Bill today. Professor Bill, hello, I am Takuya from Pallet Town. Takuya said. No trouble, no trouble. Bill said. Bill is actually quite young and kind. Oh, so that's it. How many Pokemon have you recovered? Gary and Ash have already teleported Pokemon back, but you don't have any. Professor Oak said unhappily. Professor Oak, I have a total of seven Pokemon including Lucario. I remember I told you before the departure that I would take the elite route and would not capture too many. Takuya replied. Oh. Look at my memory, it's getting old, remember to call your mother later, she misses you very much. Professor Oak said. Okay, I know. Takuya said. While Takuya and Professor Oak were talking, Professor Bill was also looking at Takuya. Okay, Bill, let's continue the topic just now. Takuya, you should go do your own thing first. Professor Oak said and ignored Takuya, and continued to talk to Bill about academic issues. Walking to Xiao Ai, Xiao Ai was chatting happily with Ash, Xiao Gang and Misty. Everyone got to know each other quickly. Xiao Ai talked about Takuya's embarrassment along the way and everyone laughed. What are you talking about? Takuya asked. Nothing, nothing. Ash hurriedly replied, but the smile on his face could not stop, which made Takuya confused. After a long time, Professor Bill finished the call and it was time for dinner. Takuya introduced Xiao Ai to Professor Bill. Professor Bill was also very happy to see these energetic boys and girls. After dinner, Takuya called his mother to hug Pingen. Professor Bill, I heard that a huge creature appears near your lighthouse at this time every year. Is this true? Takuya asked Bill. Hearing Takuya ask this, everyone was curious. Since you know this. But this is true. Bill said, tonight is the time when that guy will arrive. Let's go. I'll take you to the top of the tower. When they arrived at the top of the tower, Bill told everyone that he had been waiting for the huge figure. Then a growl came from the other side of the fog. Bill was very excited and immediately took out the prepared machine and made a response sound. The huge figure came in front of everyone. Its head was big enough to be half the size of a lighthouse. 
Lucario, use the power of waveguide to tell us what it is saying. Takuya said to Lucario. I have been looking for my companions. Is it you? Lucario used the power of waveguide to tell everyone present what the Dragonite said. Bill, Misty and Xiaoging were also shocked that Lucario could use the power of waveguide to talk to them. Ash knew about this a long time ago. I have been waiting for you here. Can I see what you look like? Bill said. Are you my companion? The huge figure asked. With the weak moonlight, Takuya saw that the huge figure was a huge Dragonite, and shouted, You are a Dragonite. In fact, you are not alone. There are many Dragonites in this world. They are all your companions, although they are not as big as you. My name is Takuya. Although I am not your kind, we can be your friends. Are you willing? Bill was surprised to hear Takuya say it was a Dragonite, but after a closer look, it was really a Dragonite. He secretly admired this boy and thought that Takuya was really extraordinary. At this time, a huge net fell from the sky and caught the Dragonite. Who is it? Ash shouted. Since you are asking sincerely. We will be merciful and tell you. To prevent the world from being destroyed. To protect world peace. To implement love and true evil. A cute and attractive villain. Jesse. James. We are Team Rocket traveling through the galaxy. White hole, white tomorrow awaits us. That's it, meow. It's Team Rocket, what a troublesome bunch. Takuya said, go, Lucario, use Aura Sphere to send them away. The Rocket Trio is also haunting, they follow Ash and the other two wherever they go. Take care of them, Abra Snake. Jesse sent Abra Snake. Go, coughing. James sent coughing. Lucario jumped to the top of the tower, and two Aura Spheres sent Abra Snake and coughing back to the hot air balloon, and another Aura Sphere broke the hot air balloon, and the Rocket Trio flew out directly. What a disgusting feeling. Before he noticed the slightest fluctuation in the space in the sky, a man in black came through the space, sitting on Charizard, with a pink Celebi beside him, silver hair shining in the moonlight flash, a strange smile on his mouth, he stretched out his right hand, took out a black prismatic crystal, threw it gently, and dropped it on Dragonite's forehead. After driving away Team Rocket, everyone was about to untie the net that trapped Dragonite, but Dragonite broke free by himself, and he looked a little strange. Dragonite, what's wrong with you? Takuya shouted. But what responded to Takuya was a loud scream, and he broke the spire with a palm of his hand, and Dragonite went crazy for no reason. The man in black saw that his goal had been achieved, and he looked at Takuya meaningfully, and then asked Celebi to open the space-time tunnel and leave. Takuya looked at soaring in the sky and felt that someone had been staring at him just now, but he didn't have time to think about it. He immediately ordered everyone to get off the tower and run out, and he stayed to stop the crazy Dragonite. Takuya, what about you? Xiao I asked. You go first, Lucario and I will stop Dragonite, and then we will follow. I will stay and help you. Ash stepped forward. Go, you will only hinder me if you stay. Takuya yelled, and he said that just to make everyone leave quickly. Ash, don't worry, Takuya is right. Xiao I said to Ash. Xiao I, it's okay, I know him. Ash smiled, didn't care, and gave Takuya a cheering look. Xiao I was a little confused, and Misty told Xiao I that Ash and Takuya were childhood friends, and Xiao I understood it. Takuya nodded, and was relieved when he saw everyone run out of the lighthouse and reach a safe place. Lucario, Aura Sphere, stop Dragonite from going crazy. Takuya shouted. A blue energy ball hit Dragonite's abdomen, exploded, and left a meaningful scar. Dragonite groaned in pain and became more violent. It fired a destructive death ray directly at Lucario. Lucario evaded it before Takuya gave the order. This was the tacit understanding between it and Takuya for many years. Although Lucario avoided the destructive death ray, the lighthouse under him was broken by Dragonite again. This won't work, Lucario, led Dragonite to the coast. While Dragonite's attention is all on Lucario, led it away to prevent Dragonite from continuing to destroy the lighthouse. Lucario jumped off the lighthouse, and then jumped to the ground from various footholds, attracting Dragonite to leave the lighthouse. Takuya also released Pidigiato and followed closely. Everyone, Lucario has led Dragonite away, you guys hurry back to the lighthouse to put out the fire. Takuya shouted to everyone on Pidigiato. Takuya, what about you? Xiao I said worriedly. 
I don't know why Dragonite went berserk, I want to calm it down now. After saying that, Takuya let Pudigiato fly towards the place where Lucario and Dragonite were fighting. Retrieving Pudigiato, at this time, the coast has been blown up by various pits of various sizes due to the collision of Dragonite and Lucario's skills and moves, and no beaches intact. Dragonite is gathering yellow energy on his mouth, which is the prelude to the launch of the destruction ray. With a whoosh, the destruction ray is launched. Lucario, double team, then aura sphere burst, aiming at Dragonite's neck. Takuya shouted. Lucario immediately split into two clones to meet Dragonite's destructive death light. The destructive death light came whistling and scattered more than half of Lucario's clones with one blow. The remaining clones were already jumping in the air. Aura Sphere was ready, and continuous attacks were made on Dragonite's neck, which was the softest part of Dragonite. For a moment, Dragonite screamed in pain. Suddenly, a lightning bolt came out from Dragonite's tentacles, breaking a clone blocking Lucario's body and directly hitting Lucario. Lucario fell to the ground with an electric current, gritting his teeth to endure the pain brought by the electric current. Dragonite seemed to have endless physical strength, and another flamethrower came at him. A trace of electric current flashed through Lucario's body, paralyzed and unable to move. Lucario, get out of the way. Takuya shouted. Seeing that Flamethrower was about to hit Lucario, Takuya was ruthless, gritted his teeth and rushed over, throwing Lucario to the ground, avoiding Flamethrower, but there was a burn on his shoulder. Lu. Takuya, are you okay? Takuya and Lucario stood up. Lucario felt sorry for the burn on Takuya's shoulder. Dragonite saw Takuya's action and his eyes flashed with clarity, but it was quickly replaced by madness. I'm fine, Lucario, let's defeat Dragonite first to resolve the crisis. Takuya said with his shoulders drooping. Lucario nodded and turned to look at Dragonite, his eyes bursting with a strong fighting spirit, and rushed out like an arrow from a string, approaching Dragonite and hitting him at close range. Come out, everyone, let's defeat Dragonite together. Takuya threw out five Pokemon balls and sent out the remaining Charmeleon, Nidorino, Bulbasaur, Pudigiato, and Sandshrew. Everyone, cooperate with Lucario later, understand. Takuya said, and the Pokemon nodded. Okay, now everyone start attacking, Charmeleon, Nidorino, Double Flamethrower, Bulbasaur, Grass Knot Rope, Pudigiato Aerial Ace, Sandshrew, Poison Barb. Takuya gave a lot of orders at once, and various attacks instantly attacked Dragonite. First, Sandshrew's poison barb hit Dragonite, and Dragonite was attracted by the attraction. When he wanted to move, he tripped over the grass knot rope and almost fell. Then the double flamethrower hit Dragonite's chest, and finally Pudigiato's aerial ace hit Dragonite's back. On one side, he was attacked by Lucario, and on the other side, he was attacked by five Pokemon collectively. Dragonite was attacked from both sides and was beaten back again and again. Okay, everyone, encore. Takuya shouted. The Pokemons attacked again, but for some reason, it seemed that Dragonite activated the ability multi-scale, and the damage of this round of attacks was reduced a lot. Lucario, seized the opportunity, continuous sword dance. Takuya shouted. While Dragonite's attention was on the other Pokemon, Lucario followed Takuya's instructions and used sword dance continuously, and his physical attack directly reached the peak. Dragonite launched an attack, and a huge yellow ball appeared in his mouth. It was a destructive death ray, targeting Bulbasaur. Get out of the way! Takuya shouted. Although Bulbasaur tried his best to run, he was still affected and fainted. Takuya immediately took out the Pokemon Ball to take back Bulbasaur, but this distraction allowed Dragonite to use Thunderbolt to hit Pudigiato, and Pudigiato also lost his ability to fight. It's bad, Takuya said. The remaining Charmeleon, Nidorino, and Sandshrew wanted to launch another round of attacks, but were all hit by Dragonite's Hydro Pump and lost their combat capabilities. Seeing that Lucario had completed his enhancement, Takuya took back all the Pokemon except Lucario. Thank you for your hard work, Takuya said to the Pokemon Ball and then turned to Lucario and shouted, Lucario, approach Dragonite. Because the rest of the Pokemon were taken back by Takuya, Lucario once again became Dragonite's target. Dragonite used one trick after another to attack Lucario, but Lucario avoided the fatal attack every time he moved. As soon as he took another flamethrower, Thunderbolt followed. 
Lucario, double team. Takuya shouted. Lucario's expression froze, and the fake bodies separated from the real body one by one, and it was hard to tell the real from the fake. Ekstrom speed. Takuya shouted again. Lucario kicked his feet, avoided Thunderbolt, and quickly approached Dragonite. Now, Lucario, kick down. Downward kick, the bigger the enemy is, the higher the damage. Lucario heard the sound and spun back, using a spinning kick, kicking Dragonite's ankle. Dragonite fell to the ground, screamed, and then fainted. It's finally over. Takuya saw a black prismatic crystal fall from Dragonite's forehead, picked it up while holding his shoulder, and sat down on the ground. Takuya also felt that this black crystal was the culprit. Lu, I feel a bad power in it. Lucario came over and leaned against Takuya and telepathically said. Takuya didn't respond either, because he had fallen asleep, and Lucario was too tired to open his eyes, and slowly fell asleep. When he woke up, Takuya found himself lying on the bed, with Shaoai accompanying him and Lucario. Seeing that Takuya woke up, Shaoai quickly went to call Bill. During this time, Lucario told Takuya about the bad smell on the crystal. Takuya, you're awake. Bill said. Where is this? Takuya asked. We are still in the lighthouse. We saw that your battle with Dragonite ended last night, so we went to find you. We saw you sleeping with Lucario, so we brought you back. The signal was put out in time yesterday. Only the upper part of the lighthouse was damaged, and the lower part is still habitable. I also used the healing machine here to restore your Pokemon. There is nothing serious. It's just that you are holding something in your hand. I want to take it out but I can't open your fist. Bill continued. Takuya then handed the black crystal in his hand to Bill. Bill Professor, take a look at what this is. I guess this is what caused Dragonite to go crazy last night. Bill took it and fiddled with it for a long time without seeing the meaning. I'll study it later. Okay. Please tell me if you have any results. Takuya said. Bill left with the crystal, leaving Takuya and Xiao Ai alone. Sorry, Xiao Ai, I made you worried last night. Looking at Xiao Ai's red eyes, Takuya knew that Xiao Ai must have not slept all night, and apologized. Don't make me worry so much next time. Xiao Ai stared at Takuya with her beautiful eyes and whispered softly. I promise, I won't do it again. Takuya said distressedly. After finally coaxing Xiao Ai to let her rest on another bed, Takuya got up and walked out of the lighthouse. Ash, who was still watching Dragonite drowsy, saw someone coming out to change shifts. Before he could see who it was, he said hello without raising his head and went back to rest. After all, he was so sleepy after taking turns to watch Dragonite all night. And Dragonite had already woken up, sitting facing the sea, not knowing what he was thinking, and the scars on Dragonite's body had almost healed after a night of recovery. It was worthy of being a quasi-god Pokemon. Dragonite, how are you? Takuya asked. Dragonite nodded and said sadly, I'm sorry, Takuya, I don't know why I caused you so much trouble after I finished it. It's okay, you don't have to care, and we are friends, right? Takuya said with a smile. Dragonite also laughed and recognized Takuya as a friend. Bill came out and interrupted, Dragonite, do you know this crystal? Dragonite stared at it for a while, shook his head, saying he didn't know. Bill had to give up and decided to go back to Professor Oak to study it together. Takuya, I think I should leave. Dragonite suddenly said. So soon. Takuya's voice was a little regretful. Dragonite nodded. I still have to continue looking for my people. Maybe we can meet again in the near future. After that, Dragonite flapped his wings and flew into the air. Goodbye, Dragonite. Takuya and Bill waved to Dragonite. Dragonite also waved, and with a flick of his huge dragon wings, he disappeared on the side of the coastline at an unimaginable speed. After leaving Bill Lighthouse, Ash decided to challenge the Rainbow City Rainbow Gym first. Takuya and Ash separated, and Bill also gave Takuya an SS ticket for the recent street. Anne's luxury cruise ship. Takuya and Xiao Ai arrived at Vermilion City, the third gym that Takuya was going to challenge, without stopping. After walking for a few days, the supplies on their bodies were almost consumed, although they were not starving. I want to take a shower. Xiao Ai muttered. Girls love cleanliness. If they don't take a shower for a few days, they will feel uncomfortable all over. Nurse Joy, our Pokemon will be handed over to you. 
As soon as they entered the Pokemon Center, Takuya and Xiaoai handed their Pokemon to Nurse Joy. Most of them were Takuya's Pokemon Balls, and Xiaoai only had one Eevee Pokemon Ball. At this time, a boy ran into the Pokemon Center in a hurry with a scarred Rattata in his arms. Rattata, it's okay, we're at the Pokemon Center, Nurse Joy, help my Rattata. The boy said. Okay, leave it to me. Nurse Joy said quickly, then took Rattata and went into the emergency room. Takuya asked, what happened? Rattata and I went to challenge the Vermilion Gym, but the gym owner was too ruthless and beat my Rattata like this. The boy said. This is the 15th one this month. Soon, Nurse Joy came out of the emergency room and said. How can you be so excessive? Xiao I said indignantly. This only shows that the gym trainers here don't know how to hold back. Takuya still has a say in gyms. Okay, is there anything else you two need? Nurse Joy asked with a smile. Xiao I said she wanted to take a shower, so Nurse Joy took her there, and Takuya asked for some food. When Xiao I came out, he accompanied Xiao Ai to eat something, and then the two went to buy some travel supplies first. When Takuya and Xiao Ai returned to the Pokemon Center, they saw another person holding his Pokemon and hurriedly entering the Pokemon Center. Without guessing, they knew that another Pokemon was injured by the gym trainer. Xiao Ai, let's go, accompany me to challenge the gym. Takuya said after putting down his things. Xiao Ai nodded. She had been traveling with Takuya for a while and it was her first time to watch the gym challenge. She was also a little curious. The two came to the gym, opened the door, and Xiao I followed Takuya in. Hey, another Pokemon is here. My name is Ma Zishi, and I am the gym owner here. Ma Zishi smiled and said to his younger brother, this is the third one today. The first of the three Pokemons Ma Zishi mentioned was the Rattata trainer before, the second one was the one he saw after buying supplies, and the third one was naturally Takuya. I'm Takuya from Pallet Town. I'm here to challenge a gym. Please join me in a gym match. Takuya shouted loudly. Mazishi looked like a gangster leader. Takuya couldn't be like Mazishi. He was very measured in his words. Takuya, what is a Pokemon? Xiao I asked innocently. It's an experienced Pokemon. Give him experience. Takuya said. Xiao I nodded as if she understood, and then went to the audience. Then let's get started. I can't help but want to beat you to tears. Ma Zishi laughed, and then asked his younger brother to stop the referee. Takuya also snorted coldly, not wanting to say anything more to someone like Ma Zishi. Now we will have a gym challenge between Takuya from Pallet Town and Ma Zishi, the trainer of the Deadwood Gym. The battle is 1v1. If one side's Pokemon loses its combat ability, the other side wins. The younger brother shouted. Go. Raichu. Ma Zishi threw the Pokemon ball with his thick arms. Sandshrew, it's you. Takuya inexplicably learned a move from Ash. Sandshrew, roll out attack. As the battle began, Takuya launched a strong and fierce attack. Sandshrew rolled himself into a ball and rolled towards Raichu. Boy, not bad. Not only do you know the attribute counteraction, but the momentum of the attack is also quite strong. Raichu, take the head on attack, million ton punch. Ma Zishi commanded with a smile. The power of the first round of rollout attack is far less than that of the million ton punch, and Takuya will not be stupid enough to go head to head with the opponent. Sandshrew, turn left to avoid it, and then use poison barb. Takuya shouted. Raichu, thunderbolt. Ma Zishi ordered. Hearing Ma Zishi's order, Raichu immediately used Thunderbolt to block Sandshrew's poison barb. Raichu, catch up, million ton punch. Ma Zishi continued to shout. Sandshrew, roll out to avoid it. Takuya said. Raichu ran up clumsily, but his speed was completely incomparable to Sandshrew. Sandshrew easily avoided this million ton punch, but Sandshrew seized the opportunity to roll behind Raichu. Sandshrew, close combat, use alloy claws. Takuya said. I'm afraid you won't fight me. Close combat, Raichu, fight back, million ton punch. Ma Zishi said confidently. Sanshru rushed forward, showing his claws. Raichu turned back and showed his fists at the same time. Sanshru grabbed Raichu's shoulder with one claw, and Raichu also hit Sanshru's hard shell with one punch. Raichu covered his shoulder and stepped back a few steps, but it was clearly visible that there was a scar on Raichu's shoulder. Sandshrew, 
poison barb, aim at the wound on Raichu's shoulder. This was Takuya's purpose. With a wound, if the wound was hit by poison barb, poisoning was basically a foregone conclusion. Ma Zishi hurriedly said, Raichu, thunder wave defense. Ma Zishi should not be underestimated, and immediately let Raichu block poison barb. Sanshru, continue the rollout attack. Takuya shouted. Million ton flying kick. Ma Zishi knew that Raichu's shoulder was injured, so he could only let Raichu change his moves. Rollout attack is a move that increases in power as it is used more times. The third rollout attack is obviously a step up. In addition, Raichu switched to the million ton kick attack that it is not good at, and was directly knocked out by Sanshru. Sanshru, encore poison barb. Takuya shouted, he would not give rival any chance to breathe. Before Raichu got up, the wound on his shoulder was hit by poison barb and slowly began to turn purple and black, which was an obvious sign of poisoning. Ma Zishi gritted his teeth and shouted for Raichu to get up quickly. Raichu, get up, use thunder. Sanshru, end it, roll out attack. Takuya shouted loudly. In fact, after two rounds of the battle, Takuya obviously discovered that although this Raichu was very powerful, its weakness was also very obvious, that is, its speed was surprisingly slow. It was probably because it was directly evolved with Thunderstone when Pikachu was just captured, so it had not learned any speed type moves. This is why Takuya let Sanshru play a quick attack. In addition to the poisoning and the previous alloy claw, Raichu's physical strength was not much left. Sanshru rollout avoided the thunder that fell from the sky, and the fourth round of rollout directly took away Raichu's combat ability. I couldn't believe this result, but seeing Ma Zishi's eyes, I quickly announced, Raichu lost his combat ability, Sanshru won, so the winner is Takuya from Pallet Town. Hearing that he won, Sanshru shouted happily, and the light of evolution appeared in his body, and he successfully evolved into Sandslash. Thank you for your hard work, Sandslash, come back and rest for a while. Takuya was naturally very happy to see Sandslash evolve, but now he still had to let Sandslash rest. What a wonderful battle, Takuya. Ma Zishi took back the Raichu, walked over and said, no longer calling Takuya, baby, young and promising boy, take it. This is your badge. Ma Zishi handed over the badge, but Takuya was reluctant to take it. Ma Zishi asked, what's the matter? Takuya looked directly into Ma Zishi's eyes, Mr. Ma Zishi, I hope you can answer me a question, why do you hurt other people's Pokemon? Looking at Takuya's clear eyes, Ma Zishi suddenly laughed. I know what you are thinking, then I tell you, I used to be a soldier, I have seen many separations and deaths on the battlefield, although Pokemon is a very cute creature, but I don't think it's just a child's play. I won't approve of people who can't even protect their own Pokemon. Now, you can take the badge. Takuya now understood Ma Zishi's intention, bowed to Ma Zishi, and then said thank you, Takuya took his third badge. Ma Zishi's words touched Takuya deeply, and he left the Vermilion Gym under Ma Zishi's gaze. Lying on the bed in the Pokemon Center, Takuya reviewed his battles in recent times. Although he has never lost a battle since his debut, Takuya knows that he will still make some mistakes, and he cannot become proud and complacent because he has never lost. He must keep his heart in everything. In order to go to the next gym, Takuya used the SS ticket given by Bill and Xiao I boarded the Saint Anno, but it was a coincidence that Takuya met Ash again here. Although the two were going in different directions, they always met each other. The food on this ship is really delicious. Misty held a plate and ate the food in the hall slowly. Eat less. B.U. Ran will get fat if you are not careful. Xiao I said and stuffed a piece of cake into her mouth. You eat more than me. The two girls laughed at each other. I really don't know where Takuya and the others went. Xiao I said. They left us alone and ignored them when they heard that there was a Pokemon battle on the ship. Misty said proudly. In the hall, Misty and Xiao I enjoyed the food, while Takuya and Ash enjoyed the Pokemon battle. Charmeleon, flamethrower. Takuya shouted. Graveler, mud bomb, block it. Rival shouted from the other side. Takuya's eyes were a little serious. At this moment, the person on the other side actually made him feel a little pressure. Mud Bomb blocked Flamethrower. The collision of the moves produced an explosion. Before Takuya could shout out the order he wanted to give, the other side had already shouted it out. Graveler, roll out attack. 
Takuya was startled. Charmeleon avoid it, use Dragon Claw on Graveler. Charmeleon was very fast. Just as Takuya finished shouting the previous second, Charmeleon avoided Graveler's rollout attack, and Dragon Claw went towards Graveler. Graveler, meet it, Kichekwan. The other side shouted. This Graveler breeder is very good, and all aspects are well developed, whether it is strength, speed or other aspects. Ding ding ding, there is a constant collision between Kichekwan and Dragon Claw, but there is no harm to the other side. Charmeleon, Iron Tail. Takuya suddenly changed his move. Charmeleon used one claw to pick up Graveler's fist, and then spun back with an Iron Tail to hit Graveler's head. The effect was outstanding. Graveler was instantly knocked to the ground and lost his ability to fight. The man on the other side took back Graveler and walked up to shake hands with Takuya in a friendly manner. Congratulations. The man said. Thank you. Takuya replied. My name is I, from Nawaye Town, let's be friends. I said with a smile. Okay. Seeing that the man was so sincere, Takuya was also willing to make friends with him. My name is Takuya, from Palat Town, Nawaye Town is not in Chengdu region, I, why did you come to Kanto region to travel? My brother and I came to participate in this Indigo Plateau conference. I replied. Then we are rival. Takuya nodded. Yes. Takuya, this is your first time traveling. I asked. Well, it's just been more than a month. Takuya replied. It's so embarrassing to be defeated by a novice trainer. I said ashamedly, but I just captured this graveler not long ago, and it has great potential. After training for a while, it will definitely defeat your Charmeleon. Takuya was also shocked. Charmeleon's training intensity was not low. Unexpectedly, it almost suffered a loss at the hands of the newly captured Graveler. It was enough to show how strong the opponent I was. Can I think you are mocking me? Takuya looked at I with a bad face. No, 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 I don't mean that. This is my brother, just call him Ao. At this time, a man who looked almost exactly like I came over, and I quickly changed the subject. Hello, I'm Ao, my stupid brother has caused you trouble. Ao also greeted Takuya in a friendly manner. Who is your stupid brother? Stupid Ao. Looking at the two people playing in front of him, he felt that they could be close friends. In addition, the three of them were all keen on Pokemon, so they chatted very well. Ao and I's travel experiences also aroused Takuya's strong interest, and he listened with great interest. Ash defeated a gentleman trainer, and then the two went to exchange Pokemon. James was bargaining with an uncle selling Magikarp, and finally spent an unknown amount of money to buy a Magikarp. As for Xiaoging, he was chatting up various big sisters with a notebook. Then the rocket team began to act, and was beaten up by the trainers. Then the saint. Anu hit something for some unknown reason, and the whole ship began to feel like it was sinking. The scene began to get chaotic, and the broadcast began to shout, Dear passengers, the saint. Anu hit a reef and is about to sink. Please go to the lifeboat quickly to gather. I will broadcast it again. People who heard the broadcast ran towards the lifeboat even more frantically, and no one cared about their lives. Takuya, where are you going? I shouted to Takuya who was walking back. I'm going to find my companions. You go first. I'll catch up with you when I find my companions. Without waiting for I to say anything else. Takuya disappeared in the crowd. The incident happened suddenly. Takuya and Xiao Ai were separated. Takuya could only go back to find Xiao Ai. He didn't know if this stupid Stephanie would get hurt in such a chaotic environment. Misty, where are you? Xiao Ai called Misty's name. Originally, they were together, but the crazy crowd broke them up. Xiao Ai stood there, looking very helpless. A running person bumped into Xiao Ai head on, and then continued to run for his life without looking back. More and more people ran towards Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai stood up despite the pain, but was soon bumped by another person. The person who was running for his life only cared about himself, so he had no time to care about others. At this time, a warm and powerful hand grabbed Xiao Ai, pulled her up from the ground, pulled her into a warm embrace, and then hid in an empty room. Takuya, saw that the person in front of him was Takuya, and Xiao Ai's tears finally fell at this moment. Takuya gently wiped away Xiao Ai's tears and said softly, I'll take care of everything. Xiao Ai stopped crying, looked at Takuya's pretty face and nodded. Takuya touched Xiao Ai's head, 
took her hand, and ran to the lifeboat. There were no people in the corridor, which meant that most people had already left on the lifeboat. Hey! Wait for us! Takuya shouted. When they ran to the lifeboat, the last lifeboat was already full of people and left. No matter how Takuya shouted, there was no intention of stopping. Xiao Ai's eyes gradually lost color. It seemed that they were destined to drown in the sea. Takuya, I'm really happy to meet you. Xiao Ai suddenly said to Takuya. Silly girl, what are you thinking about? Takuya flicked Xiao Ai's forehead lightly. Don't think about it, we will definitely escape. Takuya looked left and right, saw a lifebuoy with a rope, and quickly ran over to get it and put it on Xiao Ai's thin waist. Come out, Magikarp. Then Takuya called out Magikarp, quickly tied the rope around Magikarp, and then leaned over to whisper something in Magikarp's ear, and Magikarp cried out a few times in worry. Takuya patted Magikarp on the back. Don't worry, I'm fine. Xiao Ai saw Takuya's thoughts and said worriedly, Takuya, what are you going to do? Takuya rolled up his sleeves and pretended to be relaxed. I can swim, and I'll follow you later. Don't worry, Magikarp is holding me. Carefully helped Xiao Ai into the water, everything was ready, and with Takuya's, let's go, Magikarp immediately exerted force and pulled out of the boat. Takuya held the life buoy with one hand, and swung his legs quickly, pushing forward with all his strength. Xiao Ai knew that he couldn't swim, so he could only look at Takuya helplessly. Normally, swimming is an easy thing for Takuya and Magikarp, but the water pressure generated by the sinking of the ship made it extremely difficult for one person and one Pokemon to swim. Even if they used all their strength, they could only move slowly outward. This is not a solution. Takuya thought. The suction on his back suddenly increased, and Takuya pushed Xiao Ai forward, and Magikarp took Xiao Ai away from the influence of the ship. But Takuya was sucked over by the water pressure and circled into the vortex. In the vortex, Takuya gradually lost consciousness, and the last thing he thought was that Xiao Ai could be rescued. Takuya. Xiao Ai shouted, Magikarp, go back and save Takuya. Magikarp then realized that his master had disappeared, loosened the rope, turned around and jumped into the water, rushed into the vortex, and swam towards his master with all his strength, but he couldn't touch his master, and he was very anxious. Ha! Huh. Magikarp screamed, and the body produced the light of evolution. Xiao Ai, who was lying on the life buoy, saw a white light under the sea, and was dazzled and couldn't open her eyes for a while. The white light disappeared, and a golden Gyarados stood on the sea, with a person lying on its back. Under the moonlight, the shining Gyarados roared. Magikarp, no Gyarados saved Takuya, it's great. Xiao Ai murmured. On the vast sea, there was a huge wreckage floating. It was a piece of the Saint Anno's board. On the board, Ash, Misty, Xiaoging, Jesse, James, and Meowth sat and stared at the sea, at a loss. James was holding a Magikarp in his arms, struggling non-stop. Looking at the Magikarp, James was suddenly filled with anger at being deceived by the uncle who sold the Magikarp. He let go of the Magikarp and kicked it into the sea. You rubbish. As soon as the Magikarp touched the sea, it began to evolve and successfully evolved into Gyarados. Gyarados stared at James with his fierce face. James felt something was wrong. Brother Gyarados, I was wrong. Even his legs softened and he knelt down. As a vicious Pokemon, Gyarados won't reason with you. He opened his mouth and used Flamethrower. James trembled and saw Flamethrower coming towards him. He leaned down and avoided it safely, but Jesse behind James was not so lucky. The flame brushed Jesse's hair and ignited it directly. Jesse was also angry and didn't notice it at all. Hey, why does it feel so hot? Jesse said to herself. Jesse, you, you. Meowth swallowed and stammered. Meowth, say it quickly. Jesse said impatiently. Your hair is on fire, meow. What? Jesse was startled, and then screamed, ah, ah, ah. Jesse, put your head in the sea quickly. Xiaoging kindly reminded. Jesse finally reacted and put her head into the sea. The fire finally went out. Jesse, with wet hair, sighed and looked at James angrily. James, what are you doing? Jesse, listen to my explanation. It's not my fault. James waved his hand and explained, then pointed at Gyarados. It's him, it did it. Look at what you did, pay for my hair. Jesse cursed and was ready to fight, but when she saw Gyarados open his mouth and stare at her fiercely, Jesse trembled and stopped talking. 
Brother Gyarados, you just heard it wrong. Jesse smiled awkwardly. Gyarados didn't care about that. He used flamethrower again. This time, he included everyone on the deck in the attack range. Quick, everyone get out of the way. Xiaoging had the sharpest eyes and immediately reminded everyone. Just as everyone was about to jump into the sea, a familiar voice suddenly came. Gyarados, Hydro Pump. The powerful Hydro Pump attack blocked Flamethrower in one go, and directly suppressed it back, hitting Gyarados with one shot, knocking it into the sea. Is everyone okay? A man and a woman sat on a golden Gyarados and stopped by the deck. They got off the golden Gyarados and stood on the deck. Takuya, Xiao Ai. Ash, Xiao Gang and Misty cheered, and Misty ran over and hugged Xiao Ai directly. I'm sorry, Xiao Ai, I couldn't find you after we were separated by the crowd. Misty's voice was crying, but she was scared back when she saw the golden Gyarados. Xiao Ai patted Misty on the back, it's okay, Misty, I'm fine now. Don't rush to reminisce, drive these three Gyarados away first. Takuya interrupted. In order to distinguish Takuya's Gyarados from Wild Gyarados, I added color in front. On the sea, a Golden Gyarados and a Blue Gyarados were facing each other. The Blue Gyarados called out two more Gyarados from nowhere and stared at the Golden Gyarados fiercely. Judging from the size, the Golden Gyarados was obviously more powerful. The three Blue Gyarados clearly felt the pressure from the Golden Gyarados, and their three big mouths opened to fire three destructive death rays. Takuya snapped his fingers, we also use destructive death rays. The golden Gyarados was not afraid at all and also fired a destructive death ray in return, but this destructive death ray blocked the other side's three shots. Gyarados, finish them off, Thunderbolt. Takuya shouted. The golden Gyarados roared, and the Thunderbolt moved rapidly, with a strong current directly hitting the three blue Gyarados. The other two Gyarados saw that the situation was not good and fled directly, leaving only the leader to bear the damage caused by the Thunderbolt. Gyarados, a tribute is water plus flying. This Thunderbolt is four times the damage. It whined and was directly electrocuted. Hurry up, Misty, subdue it. Takuya shouted to Misty. Ah. Misty was stunned at first, then shook her head vigorously. No, I'm afraid of Gyarados. Misty, what is your goal? Takuya asked. My goal is of course to become a water Pokemon master. Misty said without confidence. Since you want to become a water Pokemon master, why are you afraid of Gyarados? You should know that you will come into contact with more water Pokemon in the future. How to become a water Pokemon master if you dare not use it to break through yourself? Takuya continued. After hearing what Takuya said, Misty's body trembled slightly, and she began to think again. Yes, how could such a timid person become a water Pokemon master? After figuring this out, Misty strengthened her belief and threw the Pokemon Ball. Go! Pokemon Ball! Misty shouted. Now she is no longer afraid of water Pokemon. The Pokemon Ball hit the Blue Gyarados, flashed and then disappeared. Misty immediately called out the Blue Gyarados. After the Gyarados came out, it did not get angry at Misty but accepted Misty's touch very docilely. It seems that this Gyarados likes Misty very much. Misty also restored her original energetic and beautiful appearance. The three members of Team Rocket quietly leaned together and released their Pokemon when everyone was not prepared. Come out. Coughing. Go and catch all the Pokemon of the little brats, meow. The two Pokemon rushed straight towards Ash and the others, but a Pokemon ball on Takuya's waist suddenly opened. Lu, Lucario ran out of the Pokemon ball looked at coughing of coughing with a bad face, and then two aura spheres were fired, hitting them back to Jesse and James. Everyone turned their heads when they heard the sound. Team Rocket. Ash gritted his teeth and clenched his fists. Hee hee, we didn't mean it. James smiled awkwardly. Oh, by the way, we have something else to do, so we'll leave first and won't disturb you. Team Rocket turned around and wanted to escape, but there was sea all around, where could they run to? Takuya signaled Misty with his eyes, and Misty nodded. Two fierce Gyarados surrounded the three members of Team Rocket with bad intentions. Let's talk it over, let's talk it over. James smiled bitterly. That's right, meow. What can I say to you guys? Misty said. Gyarados, hydro pump attack. Gyarados, let's hydro pump attack too. Takuya shouted. Pikachu, Thunderbolt. Ash also joined in. 
Tri-Attack rushed straight towards Team Rocket, and then flew to the distant horizon. What a disgusting feeling. If I had known this, why did I do it in the first place? Finally it's quiet. Xiaoging sighed. At this time, an untimely stomach growl sounded, and Ash touched his head embarrassedly. Under the setting sun, everyone looked at each other and laughed. Then Takuya and Ash called out Padigiato, and two Padigiato and two Gyarados of different colors pulled the board towards the city. Finally we've arrived at Lampulchi. Takuya sighed. After landing, Takuya and his friends parted ways with Ash, Misty, and Xiaoging. Although they were all in Lampulchi, they didn't know what the other was doing. As the most beautiful coastal city in Kanto, Lampulchi attracts countless people every year. The beautiful coastline and unique food make people linger. A Pokemon battle is being held on the beach. The winner can get rich rewards. How could Takuya miss such a good thing? Bulbasaur, Razor Leaf. Takuya commanded Bulbasaur. This was also the first official battle of Bulbasaur in Takuya's hands. Tap. The green leaf flew out like a sharp knife. Mankey on the opposite side had no time to dodge and took the blow completely. Then he fell to the ground and lost his ability to fight. Takuya touched Bulbasaur's round head. Good performance. Bulbasaur also shouted happily a few times. Well, Takuya is indeed a trainer who has won three badges. This is his 15th consecutive victory. Is there anyone who wants to challenge him? If not, I will announce that the winner is Takuya. The host shouted loudly, but no one dared to challenge him on stage. They were all deeply impressed by Takuya's strong strength. Then, I declare that the final winner is Takuya. The host shouted excitedly, which completely brought the atmosphere to life. Splash! This is your prize, 20,000 yuan in prize money and our new product Mega Fishing Rod of Dewan Company. Thank you. Takuya took his prize and said politely. After the game ended, the spectators gradually dispersed. Takuya walked off the stage and said to Xiao Ai, how about I treat you to a big meal? After receiving the prize money, Takuya also wanted to be generous. Okay. Xiao Ai said with a smile. She is a real foodie. What are we going to do after the big meal? Hmm, Takuya thought for a while. I haven't decided yet, maybe I will go for special training. Going for special training again, it's rare to come to the beach, let's go swimming, okay. Xiao Ai looked at Takuya expectantly. Looking at Xiao Ai, Takuya couldn't refuse and had to agree. Yeah, Xiao Ai jumped up happily. First went to the Pokemon Center to restore the physical strength of Pokemon, and then when looking for a restaurant on the street, I was lucky enough to run into Ash and his three friends who were handing out flyers. It seemed that they were dragged to do hard labor because they had no money to pay. As for the introduction on the flyer, it was a noodle restaurant, which looked pretty good. Takuya and Xiao Ai went to the noodle restaurant. In fact, this noodle restaurant is really delicious. After dinner, we came to the beach. People wearing cool clothes were playing on the beach everywhere. Takuya found a cool shade and put down his backpack. Xiao Ai ran to the dressing room to change into a swimsuit. Takuya didn't prepare a swimsuit, so he didn't plan to go into the water. He just watched Xiao Ai and didn't get into danger. Soon Xiao Ai changed into a swimsuit and stood in front of Takuya. The black one-piece swimsuit wrapped Xiao Ai's delicate body, and her originally loose hair was tied into two ponytails. Although Takuya didn't have any ideas, he was still stunned. Xiao Ai blushed, pinched the corner of her clothes, and bit her lips lightly, I'm going swimming. Takuya came back to his senses. Ah. Okay, be careful. At this moment, Takuya found that he was fascinated by Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai released Evie and played with her in the water. They had a lot of fun. Maybe Stephanie's nature is like this. The beach gradually became lively, and countless people came from all directions and gathered together, and then cheered again and again. What's going on? Xiao Ai came back wrapped in a towel and asked. Takuya shook his head to indicate that he didn't know, but he found three attributes in the crowd. At this time, a red sports car came speeding and stopped by the roadside. A hedgehog-headed boy and a group of beautiful big sisters walked towards Takuya. Hey, Takuya, long time no see, I didn't expect to meet you here. The hedgehog-headed boy greeted proudly. Takuya turned around and looked away after a glance. Long time no see Gary, you are still the same. The hedgehog-headed boy was Gary. Gary was not angry when he was ignored by Takuya, 
if I didn't bring Pokemon with me this time, I would have to fight you. Then wait until the Indigo Plateau Conference. Takuya replied indifferently. Xiao I looked at the two people in front of her curiously. How should I put it? They obviously don't like each other, but they seem to have a good relationship. After a few words, Gary dismissed his group of big sisters and walked towards the acquaintances in the crowd. Xiao I also took a shower and changed back to her original clothes. Her hair was still wet, but she had a kind of beauty that was unstained by mud. Let's go over there. There are a few people I know. Takuya told Xiao I, and Xiao I followed Takuya over. Professor Oak finally had some free time and originally wanted to have a good rest in the laboratory, but Ash's mother Delia and Takuya's mother Guangzi made an appointment to visit Lanpulchi City, so he had to help Professor Oak drive them out. 1. When they arrived at the beach, they found that a swimsuit competition was being held here. Delia participated in it with great interest, and Ash had already met Delia and was cheering for Misty who was also participating. As for Xiao Gang, those who understand will understand. Guangzi and Professor Oak were also cheering for Delia, but a familiar voice sounded in their ears. Mom, Grandpa. When Guangzi turned around, she found that her son was walking towards her with a beautiful Stephanie. Her eyes lit up and she looked at her son happily. Mom, I miss you so much. Takuya hugged his mother. Silly boy, I miss you too. Let mom see, you've grown taller. Guangzi touched Takuya's head and smiled. But to be honest, Takuya is also an alternative among his peers. He is only 10 years old, but his height has reached 1.6 meters. Xiao I watched from the side without disturbing them. Won't you introduce me? Guangzi said to Takuya with a smile. Oh, by the way, mom, this is Xiao I, my companion who traveled with me, Xiao I, this is my mother. Takuya finally reacted. Hello, auntie. Xiao I greeted politely. Hello, my Takuya has caused you trouble along the way. Guangzi fell in love with this Stephanie at the first sight of Xiao I, who was beautiful and polite. No trouble, no trouble, in fact, Takuya has been taking care of me. Xiao I spoke more and more quietly, as if because of shyness, which made people feel like meeting the parents. Xiao I spoke softly, but Guangzi still heard it, and Takuya echoed on the side, that's right. Guangzi glared at Takuya, and Takuya quickly shut up, then Guangzi took Xiao I's hand and chatted, and both of them laughed very happily. Professor Oak and Gary came over to greet Takuya after the greetings, and Ash also saw Gary at a glance, and came over to challenge Gary, but Gary ignored this rookie at all. Gary, I want to duel with you. Ash gritted his teeth and said. Takuya was speechless, he was not young anymore, could he be more stable? In fact, there was no big suspense in this swimsuit competition. Although there were many participants, Stephanie was not the mature, intellectual, romantic and beautiful big sister rival. In the end, Ash's mother Delia won the first place in this competition. As for what the reward was, Takuya didn't pay attention. After the game, all the familiar people gathered together, Takuya, Ash, Gary. Professor Oak, Mitsuko, Delia, Xiao Ai, Misty and Xiao Gang. Professor Oak suggested a beach barbecue, which was unanimously approved by everyone, and a beach barbecue began with laughter. After the barbecue, Gary drove away in a sports car, and his handsome back made Ash complain. Professor Oak, Mitsuko, and Delia were also ready to leave because they had to return to Pallet Town before dark. However, before leaving, Mitsuko strangely pulled Xiao Ai aside and whispered something. Xiao Ai had a smile on her face, and her eyes looked at Takuya from time to time, but when she met Takuya's eyes, she retracted them, which made Takuya confused. Before leaving, Mitsuko did not forget to remind Takuya to take good care of Xiao Ai. Takuya nodded and thought in his heart, Mom, I am your son. Because it was too late last night, Takuya and Xiao Ai both overslept at the Pokemon Center and missed the ship leaving Lanpulchi City. Looking at the endless sea, Xiao Ai and Takuya looked at each other awkwardly. There is no other way. We can only stay here for another day. Takuya said. Xiao Ai could only nod in agreement. But it is strange to say that for some reason, tentacle were floating everywhere on the water surface of the harbor today. An old lady who looked a little shabby drove a green tank and stopped in front of Takuya. Hey, would you like to help drive away these tentacle? If you drive them away successfully, you can share the 1 million bonus. 
Hearing that there was a bonus, Takuya immediately became interested. You know, the cost of this trip is not low. He threw and caught the Pokemon ball in his hand. Of course I am interested. Following the old lady, the old lady recruited some trainers on the way, almost all of whom came for the 1 million bonus. Takuya asked Xiao Ai to go back to the Pokemon Center for her safety. As everyone came to an open area, countless Tentacool and Tentacruel floated on the water, surrounding the city. With the old lady's order, the action of driving away Tentacool and Tentacruel officially began. All trainers released their Pokemon and started fighting with Tentacool and Tentacruel. The various moves were dazzling for a while. Takuya was originally preparing to let Lucario go forward to fight, but suddenly he thought of something. Why did the Pokemon surround the city? Was there something attracting them? Just as the battle was getting more and more intense, a piercing supersonic suddenly came from the sea, and everyone covered their ears uncomfortably because of this supersonic. A huge figure suddenly broke through the sea, raising a huge wave, which scattered the trainers and Pokemon on the coast. Fortunately, Takuya hid far away as soon as he opened and survived. A giant tentacruel appeared on the sea, and the piercing supersonic was emitted by it. The giant tentacruel waved its thick tentacles and began to attack the people present. Lucario, stop it, or a sphere. Takuya saw the suffering people running around, and had to take action, but the Pokemon in Takuya's hand that could fight this huge monster was probably only Lucario. Lucario splashed high, condensed blue energy balls in both hands, and fired at the giant tentacruel. Although it did not cause any substantial damage to the stinger, it successfully attracted the attention of the giant tentacruel. The giant tentacruel emitted another burst of supersonic, and Takuya and Lucario immediately covered their ears, but it was still very uncomfortable. Tentacruel took the opportunity to whip Lucario and whipped Lucario into the beach. Lucario, are you okay? The giant tentacruel stopped the supersonic, and Takuya shouted. Lucario jumped out of the pit and shook off the mud and sand on his body to show that he was fine. At this time, the tentacles of the giant tentacruel attacked again. Lucario stepped back to avoid it, but another tentacle appeared behind it. Lucario, bone strike, behind. Takuya shouted. Lucario turned around and the power of the bone club was condensed to block the attack of the tentacle. Aura sphere burst. Takuya ordered again. The aura sphere hit the giant tentacruel. The continuous explosions made the giant tentacruel retreat again and again, almost falling into the sea, but it still stabilized its body. The giant tentacruel immediately counterattacked, and countless tentacles rushed to Lucario. No matter how flexible Lucario was, he could not avoid so many tentacles and was firmly trapped by the tentacles. Lucario struggled hard, but it was in vain. The giant tentacruel immediately used another fantasy light, which completely hit the bound Lucario. The effect was great, and even Lucario fell into a chaotic contest condition. Lucario, come back. Takuya took out the Pokemon Ball and forcibly took back Lucario, but the giant tentacruel was not ready to let go of the target easily, and turned to attack Takuya. Lucario fell into a chaotic contest condition and could not fight anymore, but the strength of the other Pokemon in Takuya's hand was not a little bit different from that of the giant tentacruel, and Takuya was in a huge crisis for a while. Road. Lucario's Pokemon Ball suddenly opened by itself and blocked in front of Takuya. Lucario half knelt and panted, and it consumed a lot of physical strength to force it to get rid of the chaos. The giant tentacruel used Hydro Pump to Takuya and Lucario. The attack range was very large and it was impossible to escape. Lucario forced his body to condense Aura Sphere, but Takuya didn't think that this Aura Sphere could block Tentacruel's Hydro Pump attack. On the other side, on the top of a building in the city center, standing on the edge, letting the wind blow their hair, overlooking the city below, they are wearing the same purple clothes, with a colorful R logo on their chest and back. Leng, do you think the device professor gave us is useful? Can it attract that big guy? Luan pointed to a sound wave transmitter on the ground and said to Leng. Who knows, wait. Luan. Leng said coldly. Seeing the crisis in front of them, a destructive death light suddenly appeared to block the hydro pump, followed by a loud dragon roar. Takuya was a little surprised. Dragonite, why are you here? Thank you for saving me and Lucario. It was the giant Dragonite that appeared. Dragonite looked at Takuya happily, 
then pointed at the giant tentacruel, and then Lucario's wave power said, Takuya, I'm so happy to see you, but I will cooperate with you to hit the guy in front of me first. Then Dragonite gave Lucario a look that left it to me, and Lucario nodded with relief. Lucario, you take a rest on the side, let Dragonite take care of this for the time being. Takuya said to Lucario. Lucario had done a good job, but the opponent was too strong. The huge tentacruel was surprised to see a creature as big as himself suddenly appear in front of him, but at the same time it also aroused its fighting instinct, waving its tentacles and rushing towards Dragonite. Dragonite, let's go, safeguard. Takuya ordered. After hearing Takuya's command, a barrier appeared outside Dragonite, blocking all the tentacles. Tentacruel used the troublesome supersonic again, and Takuya quickly covered his ears, but this supersonic seemed to have no effect on Dragonite. Before Takuya gave the order, Dragonite waved his wings and used Twister, directly interrupting Tentacruel's supersonic attack. Tentacruel roared and spit up black acid from his mouth, the smell was disgusting. Dragonite, Ekstrom Speed Dodge, go around behind it and use the freezing punch. Takuya commanded Dragonite. Dragonite nodded, and Ekstrom Speed dodged the acid while going around behind Tentacruel, followed by a freezing punch. Tentacruel wanted to turn around, but he was too big and too slow, so he was hit by Dragonite's move, leaving obvious traces of frostbite on Tentacruel's body. Dragonite, understand it, thunder. Although we don't know what moves Dragonite can do, but to grow so big, it must have experienced a long time, so Dragonite should know a lot of moves. Dragonite roared, summoned a black cloud in soaring in the sky, and with a loud, boom, a huge lightning passed through the cloud and hit Tentacruel, Tentacruel screamed. Thunder didn't exist for long, and soon the cloud dissipated, and Tentacruel didn't fall down. Big size means more physical strength. Takuya complained. Prepared for the next attack, but the next scene surprised Takuya. The huge Tentacruel looked at Dragonite fearfully, then quickly sank into the sea with his people and disappeared. For a while, no Tentacool and Tentacruel were seen on the sea. Takuya grinned bitterly, but the incident was finally over. Thank you, Dragonite. Takuya thanked sincerely. If Dragonite hadn't appeared today, Takuya really didn't know what to do. Lu, thank you, Lucario also thanked. Dragonite smiled. Takuya, I heard the voice of my tribe, I'll leave first. Yeah. Watching Dragonite leave, Takuya couldn't help but sigh. Dragonite is really strong. If Dragonite hadn't gone berserk last time, Lucario probably wouldn't be Dragonite's rival under normal circumstances, but at the same time, this also aroused Lucario's covet's fighting spirit to become stronger. People were surprised to see the two giant Pokemon, and they were also happy for the departure of Tentacool. The city finally returned to its original calm. The old lady saw Takuya commanding the giant Dragonite to drive away the giant Tentacruel, drove over in a tank, wrote a check to Takuya, and told Takuya that this was a bonus for him. As for how much bonus, only Takuya who got the check knew. On the other side, Pidgeot, Divine Bird. The masked young man in black clothes and silver hair stood on Charizard's back and issued an attack order to Firo of Luan and Furkbat of Leng. Firo, Furkbat destroys the death ray. Luan and Leng shouted loudly at the same time. The silver-haired young man smiled lightly, and Pidgeot suddenly accelerated, avoiding two destruction death rays, and then defeated Firo and Furkbat with only one move of Divine Bird, making them lose their combat ability. Where did this guy come from, so strong? Leng gritted his teeth and said, who are you? The young man looked at Luan and Leng, and slowly said, Team Rainbow Rockets, you shouldn't be here. How do you know? Luan blurted out, but immediately realized that he had said the wrong thing. Just as he was about to take out the Pokemon Ball and call out his chivalrous Pokemon, he was stopped by Leng. Leng said calmly, we are not his rival, retreat first. What about the mission? Luan said. The mission can only be abandoned, and I won't blame it if I explain it to the higher-ups at that time. Leng said. Luan thought for a while, took back the Pokemon Ball, and then took back Firo and Furkbat, who had lost their combat ability, with Leng. We will meet again. Leng glanced at the young man, and then he and Luan opened the time shuttle and fled. The young man watched the two leave, and did not mean to keep them, Pidgeot, destroy the device. After destroying the device, Luan took back Pidgeot and released the pink Celebi, saying to himself, 
you have to grow up quickly. Then he traveled through time and space under Celebi's ability and disappeared. Just as the young man left, Dragonite rushed over and stopped on the building. Looking around, he found nothing. Obviously, Dragonite heard the voices of his tribe here. After a while, Dragonite also left disappointed. The appearance of Dragonite in the city caused a huge response, but fortunately it did not cause any harm to the city. Takuya returned to the Pokemon Center and saw Xiao Ai who was worried about him as soon as he entered the door. I'm back. After spending another day in Lanpulchi City, Takuya and Xiao Ai finally caught up with the passing ship. After sailing for a while, the two finally arrived at Maiden Gorge. After getting off the boat, they saw that the street in front was full of stalls and vendors of all kinds, and people were coming and going, so lively. So lively, Xiao Ai said happily. Now it is the annual temple fair in Maiden Gorge, of course it is lively. Takuya replied, Xiao Ai, do you know the legend here? I don't know. Xiao Ai shook her head. Takuya pointed to the stone statue of the girl in the valley and said, Legend has it that 2,000 years ago, this country and its neighboring country broke out in a war, and the girl's fiancé was conscripted to join the army and participated in the war. The girl missed her lover and stood on the strait every day hoping that her lover would come back. The girl waited and waited, until she turned into a stone statue, and her lover did not come back. So romantic, Xiao Ai said intoxicatedly, holding her face. At this time, Takuya showed his straight male personality, what romance do little brats know? You are not a little brat yourself. The beautiful fantasy was broken by Takuya all of a sudden. He left Takuya and walked towards the street stall with a choked look. Takuya realized that he had said the wrong thing and quickly chased after him. I want to see you, I really want to see you. At this time, a voice came into Takuya's ears. Takuya was startled, and then looked around. No one was talking to him. Although he felt strange, he didn't care too much. Takuya followed Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai always picked up some accessories from time to time. Although her eyes were full of love, she didn't spend money to buy them. Xiao Ai picked up a hairpin again, looked at it for a long time, but still put it down silently. At this time, a voice came from behind Takuya. I saw that you look too much like the girl's lover. Remember to be careful of beautiful women. Takuya looked back and was startled by the old woman with a cane behind him. He finally comforted his little heart, but the old woman had disappeared. I saw a ghost today. Takuya thought to himself. She is not a person, but a ghastly. Lucario's voice came from the bottom of his heart. It should be a ghastly that has lived for a long time. Takuya finally understood why a girl's gorge encountered some strange things. Boss, pack up that hairpin, I want it. Takuya said to the boss after coming back to his senses. He could see that Xiao Ai liked this hairpin very much. Takuya and Xiao Ai came to the Pokemon Center first, but because of the temple fair, the Pokemon Center was already full of people, so they had no choice but to find a hotel outside to stay. Night fell quickly, and lanterns were lit up, illuminating the streets. Although it was night, the temple fair was obviously more lively than in the afternoon. Xiao Ai had a marshmallow in one hand and a grilled squid in the other, and she ate it with relish. There was no way, Takuya had to come out to accompany Xiao Ai to the temple fair at night in order to make Xiao Ai forgive him. I said, pay attention to beautiful women. The old woman's voice sounded again behind Takuya. Just as Takuya was about to turn around, Xiao Ai pulled Takuya away. I heard that there will be fireworks tonight, let's go. Let's go watch the fireworks. Yeah, Takuya responded, but he turned around and couldn't find the old woman dressed as ghastly. On the edge of the strait, many people have already taken their seats to enjoy the fireworks. Takuya and Xiao Ai also found a good position and quietly waited for the fireworks to bloom. Boom, 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 as the fireworks were launched, the originally gray soaring in the sky suddenly bloomed with beautiful flowers. Hey, this is for you. Takuya took out the hairpin he bought during the day after just one look. Xiao Ai, who was still carefully enjoying the fireworks, turned her head when she heard Takuya's voice. Takuya still held her favorite hairpin in his hand. Xiao Ai looked at Takuya blankly, not knowing what to say for a while. Is there something on my face? Takuya touched his face and said, I saw you like this hairpin very much during the day, so I bought it. Xiao Ai chuckled and took the hairpin. Thank you, Takuya. 
Thank you for staying with me. Xiao Ai only said the latter sentence silently in her heart. Takuya smiled and touched Xiao Ai's hair, causing Xiao Ai's face to blush. At this time, a firework bloomed in soaring in the sky, drawing a big red heart. Wow, it's beautiful. Someone in the crowd exclaimed, yes, it's really beautiful. Back at the hotel, Xiao Ai was too tired to play and fell asleep, but Takuya left the hotel and walked towards the girl rock. There was a voice calling him in the dark. Soon, a gust of cold wind blew over, and then the girl's ghost appeared. I miss you so much, I miss you so much, said the girl ghost. Takuya sneered and said, ghastly, stop pretending. I know it's you. Let's fight. I'm here to conquer you. Tisk tisk, now that you've discovered me, it's really boring, but you really look exactly like the girl's lover. The girl ghost turned back into ghastly and said. Then did the girl's wish come true when she saw me. And you can be conquered by me with peace of mind. Takuya said, and then called out Lucario from the Pokemon Ball. What an anxious trainer, but do you think this guy can beat me? Ghastly asked. You'll know after you fight, Lucario, or a sphere. Takuya ordered. Lucario used Aura Sphere, Ghastly immediately used Double Team to avoid Aura Sphere, and then all of Ghastly's clones used Shadow Balls on Lucario. Lucario, Double Team. Takuya shouted. Lucario also used Double Team to avoid Ghastly's Shadow Ball attack. Ghastly laughed slyly and hid his whole body in the darkness. Then he quickly moved to the front of Lucario, whose clone disappeared, and used the tongue licking, but how could Takuya do what Ghastly wanted? Lucario, heart's eye. Takuya shouted. Lucario spotted Ghastly at a glance and easily avoided Ghastly's tongue licking. It's really troublesome to fight with your Lucario. Ghastly complained, but he didn't stop his action. Ghastly opened his eyes and cast hypnosis on Lucario, but Lucario was not so easily hypnotized by Ghastly. He immediately closed his eyes and stopped looking at Ghastly. Instead, he used his trained sensory ability to find the location of Ghastly. Takuya didn't rush to give orders. He was also waiting, waiting for Ghastly to appear from the shadows again. I found its location. Lucario used the power of Waveguide to find Ghastly's location and transmitted telepathy to Takuya. At this time, another shadow ball rushed towards Lucario, but at the same time Ghastly also showed up to release his moves. Lucario, dodge, and use Dark Pulse. Takuya said to Lucario who closed his eyes. Lucario dodged Ghastly's shadow ball at the first time, and then used Dark Pulse towards the corner where Ghastly appeared, hitting directly and causing damage, but not enough to knock him down, so Takuya naturally took advantage of the victory to pursue. Lucario, or a sphere. Takuya shouted the last command. Ghastly was a bit unlucky. He was knocked to the ground by Dark Pulse, and before he could get up, he was hit by another Aura Sphere, which was very effective. Go! Pokemon Ball! Takuya threw the Pokemon Ball, threw it at Ghastly, shook it three times, and successfully captured it. Takuya's current Pokemon, Lucario, Charmeleon, Pudigiato, Iron Shell Kun, Nidorino, Gyarados, Sandslash, Bulbasaur, Ghastly. Takuya picked up Ghastly's Pokemon Ball and immediately called out Ghastly. It's really a headache to be captured by you. Ghastly said helplessly. Then are you willing to admit that I am your trainer? Takuya asked. Ghastly didn't hesitate. A Pokemon has lived alone for thousands of years. Now he finally has a friend. Ghastly nodded. Please give me more advice in the future. Takuya said. By the way, there is something for you. Ghastly entered a building next to the girl rock and took out a box from it and gave it to Takuya. Takuya opened the box and found a necklace inside. This is the girl's necklace. She asked me to give it to you. The girl's soul is in it. Ghastly laughed, as if to scare Takuya. But Takuya was not scared, he took Ghastly back and went back to rest. Takuya and Xiao Ai did not leave Maiden Gorge immediately, after all, it was an annual temple fair, so they played in Maiden Gorge for another day. As soon as they left Maiden Gorge, the girl's voice came into Takuya's ears, I will always follow you, and I won't let you leave me again this time. Takuya looked around and saw that only Xiao Ai was around. He looked up and saw a girl floating in the air and smiling at him. Takuya touched the Pokemon Ball on his waist to make sure Ghastly was still in the Pokemon Ball. Then he looked at Sky and saw that the girl was still there. Takuya swallowed his saliva. 
continuing to Saffron City, Takuya's iron shell kun successfully evolved into Beedrill after defeating a wild Caterpie. With a red body and two powerful bee stingers, Takuya sighed that he had finally cultivated Weedle to its final form. After walking for two days, they finally arrived at Saffron City. Takuya and Xiao Ai went to the Pokemon Center first. Takuya first got familiar with the battle cooperation with Ghastly, and prepared to challenge the gym after lunch. When they arrived at the door of the Saffron Gym, Takuya knocked on the door, and a person wearing a mask suddenly jumped out, scaring Takuya and Xiao Ai, and then said a lot of things, saying that without Psychic, Sabrina could not be defeated and that if they lost, they would be turned into a doll by Sabrina. Takuya and Xiao Ai looked at each other, not knowing whether it was true or false. To be on the safe side, Takuya asked Xiao Ai to return to the Pokemon Center and prepared to challenge the gym alone. Please take me to see Sabrina. Takuya said a little stiffly. After all, according to what the man said, losing this gym battle is a matter of life and death. The man was shocked when he heard it, and just led the way. Miss Sabrina, there is someone here who wants to challenge you. The man took Takuya to the destination and turned around and left quickly. Are you the challenger? A little Stephanie, holding a doll with red eyes, floated up from the chair. Is this the psychic? Takuya thought in his heart, but Takuya didn't think this was Sabrina. The gym trainer couldn't be so young. Sorry, I want to challenge Miss Sabrina. Takuya said. Behind little Stephanie, a woman in red clothes floated out. I am Sabrina. I can see that you are very strong, but anyone who loses will become my doll. Okay. Takuya nodded. Since he was here, there was no retreat. The battle is 1v1. If you win, you get the badge. If you lose, you stay and become a doll. Sabrina said coldly, and then called out her Pokemon Abra. I don't want to become a toy, ghastly, I'll leave it to you. Takuya complained. Hee hee, you finally let me out. It's too boring to stay in the Pokemon ball. Ghastly circled around Takuya and laughed as soon as he came out. Ghastly, be serious, we are fighting now. Takuya said sternly. Okay, got it. Ghastly floated to the battlefield, still with a playful smile, without a trace of seriousness. Challenger attacks first, Sabrina said. Then I won't be polite, Ghastly, invisible, shadow ball, Takuya ordered. Ghastly heard Takuya's order and immediately hid his body, and then used shadow ball in the shadow. Abra, use teleport, Sabrina ordered. Abra's eyes opened, glowing red, and she used teleport, disappearing and reappearing on the other side of the field. Ghastly, fear face. Takuya had a smile on his face, and it was unknown what he was thinking. Abra, prepare teleport, Sabrina said. Ghastly suddenly appeared in front of Abra with a smile, and made a face randomly. Abra was frightened and couldn't move on the spot. Without Takuya giving any instructions, Ghastly used his tongue to lick Abra, licking her body, making Abra tremble all over. The third move that followed was Shadow Ball, an ultra-close range attack that caused huge damage and knocked Abra to the ground directly. As a Ghastly who has lived for thousands of years and learned human language, his IQ is quite high. Some instructions don't need Takuya to give, Ghastly can guess Takuya's thoughts, so there is such an almost perfect cooperation, but the battle is not over yet. Abra, recover. Sabrina suddenly said. Her voice is still cold, but it sounds a little angry. Abra floated up from the ground again and used recover. Ghastly, don't let it succeed, Dark Knight curse. Takuya shouted immediately. Abra used recover very quickly and completed it in a flash, but she didn't avoid Ghastly's Dark Knight curse. Dark Knight curse hit Abra and seemed to be very effective, but Abra seemed to be fine. This might be the power of the psychic type moves. Abra's recovered physical strength far exceeded the damage caused by Dark Knight curse. It's really difficult. Ghastly pouted. Takuya would not give up the attack after seeing Abra's physical strength recovered. Ghastly, use hypnosis. Takuya shouted. Abra, use flash. Sabrina ordered. When Ghastly used hypnosis, Abra used flash, which directly interrupted Ghastly's hypnosis and temporarily made Ghastly lose his visual ability. Abra, use confusion. Sabrina ordered. Ghastly, quickly hide. Takuya shouted hurriedly. But Ghastly didn't hear it. Flash seemed to have not only visual effects but also auditory effects. Ghastly was directly confused and fell to the ground. 
Gastly, are you okay? Takuya asked worriedly. Gastly floated up exhausted, panting. Sure enough, the power of Abra's psychic move was beyond the usual, otherwise it would be impossible for Gastly to lose so much physical strength with just one move. It's okay, I can still fight. Gastly closed one eye and shook his head vigorously. To be honest, you, Gastly, who can only talk, are quite interesting, but that's all. Abra, confusion. Sabrina continued to order. Gastly, invisible. Takuya ordered quickly. Gastly immediately became invisible and avoided the confusion attack. Gastly, shadow ball. Takuya ordered again. This move again, Abra, teleport. Sabrina said. Just like before, the shadow ball was dodged by Abra's teleport. Shadow ball continuous. Takuya shouted. Although teleport avoided Gastly's first shadow ball, Gastly aimed at Abra and then sent the second, third, and seven shadow balls in succession. Abra, illusion, return the shadow ball to Gastly. Sabrina said. Abra used illusion to control the shadow ball and send it back to Gastly. Fortunately, Gastly hid in the shadow again and was not hit by his own shadow ball. At this time, Abra suddenly became dizzy and fell into the chaos contest condition. Chaos. When? Is it caught in the shadow ball? Sabrina frowned. Guessed it right, but unfortunately there is no prize, ghastly, night curse. Takuya snapped his fingers. Abra, teleport. Sabrina said. But Abra ignored Sabrina's orders because of the confusion, and attacked herself for no reason, and the night curse also hit her completely, causing huge damage. Soon Abra lifted the chaos contest condition, and Sabrina's next move, Takuya probably thought that Sabrina would let Abra use recover. Abra, recover. As expected by Takuya, Sabrina would let Abra use recover, but Takuya was waiting for this opportunity. Ghastly, hypnosis. Takuya shouted. Although Abra used recover to recover her strength, Ghastly hypnotized Abra and she fell asleep. Abra, use sleep talk. Sabrina ordered calmly. Although Takuya was surprised that Abra could even use this trick, he quickly figured out a way to deal with it. Ghastly goes around behind Abra and uses Shadow Ball. Abra was in the sleep contest condition. Although she used sleep talk, the sleep contest condition could not be aimed after all. The randomly used confusion only hit the air. Ghastly went around behind Abra and hit Abra with a powerful Shadow Ball, smashing her into the field. In fact, Takuya was betting on whether Abra would wake up after this Shadow Ball. If Abra woke up and used Recover again, it would be an extremely difficult battle. Takuya could only make a quick decision. If Abra did not wake up, Takuya was very confident that he would take down the badge. The smoke dissipated, revealing Abra's figure. Fortunately, Abra did not wake up. Although she floated up again, it was just a subconscious action. In fact, Sabrina saw this very clearly through her psychic. Takuya also knew that Abra's whole body was curled up when she fell asleep, so Abra had not woken up yet. Gastroli, end it, dream eater. Takuya shouted loudly. Abra, wake up quickly. Sabrina shouted hurriedly. Gastly chuckled, used dream eater, and entered Abra's dream. Then Abra woke up suddenly, and Gastly flew out, laughing, as if Abra's dream tasted good. Abra just woke up, and then fell to the ground and lost her ability to fight. I can't believe it, Abra lost her ability to fight, Ghastly won, so the winner is Takuya. The man with a mask jumped out from nowhere and announced. You fought well, this is the gold badge. Sabrina used Psychic to float a box in front of Takuya. Takuya opened the box and took out the gold badge. Thank you. Takuya said and quickly left the Saffron Gym, leaving this troubled place. After leaving the gym, Takuya immediately breathed a sigh of relief, feeling like he had escaped death and quickly returned to the Pokemon Center to eat something with Shao Ai to calm his nervous mood. After leaving Saffron City, Takuya would call out Beedrill every day after lunch to communicate with him while on the road. After all, when it was still a steel-shelled coon, Takuya rarely called it out to fight, and he neglected it a little. Now Takuya wants to focus on cultivating his relationship with Beedrill, and promised to let Beedrill play when challenging the Rainbow Gym. Although Beedrill was a little neglected, Beedrill didn't care much. After all, it knew that it didn't have much fighting ability when it was still a steel-shelled coon. Along the way, Takuya also won many battles with Beedrill, and the cooperation with Beedrill was also steadily improving. 
The two continued to move forward, camped in the wild for a day, and continued to walk on the second motion. At noon, they finally arrived in Rainbow City. When they were about to enter Rainbow City, Takuya and Shao Ai saw an Eevee. Shao Ai wanted to call out his Eevee to communicate with that Eevee, but the Eevee just glanced at the two of them and ran away. Walking into Rainbow City, the two were immediately shocked by the prosperous scene of Rainbow City. There were skyscrapers, department stores and wealthy residential areas everywhere. Then, a fragrance attracted Shao Ai. It's perfume. Shao Ai smelled the scent sensitively, and then followed the scent into a well-decorated store. Takuya walked in immediately. After walking in, the fragrance became stronger, and Shao Ai had already started to pick perfumes on the shelves. Takuya was not interested in perfume but still said, what a nice smell. Oh, does this boy also know perfume? At this time, a beautiful woman in a kimono stood next to Takuya and said. Oh no, I just think it smells good. Takuya said modestly, but he looked closely and found out who the woman next to him was. Excuse me, are you Miss Erica, the owner of the Rainbow Gym? Yes. Erica replied with a smile. Miss Erica, hello, I am Takuya from Pallet Town, please accept my gym challenge. When he met the gym owner Takuya, he would naturally not miss the challenge of the gym. Takuya, I'm sorry, I can't have a gym challenge with you right now. Erica apologized. Is there a reason? Takuya asked. Recently, a strange Eevee appeared near Rainbow City. It can evolve into three restrained forms according to the attribute of the opponent's Pokemon, and has injured several trainers who want to capture it. As a gym trainer, I must solve this incident first. Erika explained the reason. At this time, Xiao Ai had already selected a perfume she liked and bought it and walked to Takuya. Is it the Eevee we met when we first entered Rainbow City? Takuya nodded. I guess so, Miss Erika, please allow me to help too. Really? Takuya, it's great that you are willing to help. As long as this incident is resolved, we can have a gym match immediately. Erika excitedly shook Takuya's hand. After all, Rainbow City is so big, it is still a question when I can find the Eevee by myself. Now one more person means more strength. We will try our best. Takuya said embarrassedly, after all. His hand was held by a beautiful sister, but Takuya didn't notice that Xiao Ai beside him pouted and turned her head away. After leaving the perfume shop, Takuya and Xiao Ai first came to the Pokemon Center. After a rest, the two went out to find the Eevee. Lucario, please use the power of wave guidance to find the Eevee hiding in this city. Takuya said to his partner Lucario. Eevee, you come out to help too. Xiao Ai also released her little Eevee. Lucario closed his eyes and used the power of wave guidance to feel the slightest movement in the city. Suddenly, a figure stepped on the lawn and flashed in Lucario's mind. Here, Lucario opened his eyes and told Takuya and Xiao Ai, then ran in one direction. Xiao Ai's Eevee also called a few times, and then ran with Lucario. Takuya and Xiao Ai looked at each other and immediately followed. After following Lucario for about 10 minutes, we saw an Eevee resting on a rock with yawn in its mouth. The lazy Eevee immediately became angry when it saw Takuya and Xiao Ai, and took an attacking stance towards them. Leave it to me. Takuya stopped in front of Xiao Ai, and signaled Lucario to protect Xiao Ai. You have to be careful. Xiao Ai warned him, after all, he heard that this Eevee had hurt several trainers. Takuya nodded. Come out. Bulbasaur. Takuya called out Bulbasaur. In fact, Takuya had some doubts in his heart. Eevee, as a docile Pokemon, would not be able to hurt people with Solacean. There must be other reasons, but now it is still necessary to capture it first. Seeing Takuya send out Bulbasaur, Eevee shook its ears and evolved directly into a fire Pokemon. Is that possible? Takuya was shocked. According to his understanding, Eevee can only evolve when using specific evolution stones or under specific conditions, and it is impossible to evolve Solacean anytime and anywhere. The fire Pokemon didn't care what Takuya was thinking and used Flamethrower directly. Bulbasaur, Flower Dance. Takuya reacted and ordered. Although Flower Dance blocked Flamethrower, it was also burned into pieces of scorched flowers. Bulbasaur, come back, it's your turn, Charmeleon. Takuya saw this and heard Erika said that this Eevee can evolve into three forms of Solacean, so he took back Bulbasaur and sent Charmeleon, Charmeleon, Flamethrower. 
When the fire Pokemon saw Takuya summon Charmeleon, his body trembled, his face was full of pain, and then he degenerated back to Eevee, and then his ears moved again, and he evolved into a water Pokemon again. The evolution was completed, and the water Pokemon used water gun to offset Charmeleon's flamethrower. Charmeleon, come back, go, Pidgeotto. Takuya changed Pokemon again and replaced it with Pidgeotto. Eevee's Solacean evolution completely broke Takuya's cognition. The water Pokemon also degenerated into Eevee again, and then evolved into Eevee's third evolution form, the Thunder Pokemon, and hit Pidgeotto directly with a Thunderbolt. Takuya, look at Eevee's ears. Shao I reminded him from the side. Pidgeotto, flying sand kick. Takuya shouted. Pidgeotto raised the dust and blocked the thunderbolt of the thunder Pokemon. Shao I, I also found that Eevee's ears move before each evolution. Takuya answered Shao I, thinking of a possibility, that is, this Eevee is controlled by something, Takuya thought, I can only defeat Eevee first. Bulbasaur, please one more time. Takuya took back Pidgeotto and called Bulbasaur again. The Thunder Pokemon was indeed ready to return to the appearance of Eevee, but Takuya was waiting for this opportunity. Bulbasaur, Leech Seed, tie up Eevee's ears. Takuya shouted. Bulbasaur immediately spit up a small seed from the big seed on its back, parasitizing Eevee's ears directly, and then some vines grew from the small seed, tightly tying Eevee's ears. Eevee painfully tried to tear off the vines on his ears, but it was useless no matter how hard he tried. Bulbasaur, Leaf Flower Dance. Takuya shouted. In fact, Leaf Flower Dance is Razor Leaf plus Flower Dance, but Takuya turned them into a combination skill. Eevee, who was still pulling Leech Seed, didn't pay any attention to Bulbasaur's attack. Leaf Flower Dance hit directly, causing huge damage, and Eevee fell to the ground and fainted. Thank you for your hard work, Bulbasaur. Takuya took back Bulbasaur, ran over and picked up Eevee, tore off the leech seed on Eevee's ear, and turned it over. Eevee's ear was implanted with a metal chip. I knew this was not Eevee's original ability. Who would do this? Takuya thought to himself. Takuya, be careful. Shao I suddenly shouted. She saw Eevee in Takuya's arm suddenly wake up and bite Takuya's arm. Shao I, it's okay. Takuya stopped Shao I from coming over, then looked at Eevee in his arms and said gently, It's okay, no one will hurt you anymore. Eevee looked at Takuya's sincere eyes and slowly let go of Takuya's mouth. Bui, Eevee shouted, and then fainted again. Takuya, are you okay? Shao I came over, saw the teeth marks on Takuya's arm, took out her handkerchief, and tied it to Takuya. Don't worry, Shao I, I'm fine. Let's go back to find Miss Erika. Takuya said. Yes. After returning to the Pokemon Center, he first handed Eevee to Nurse Joy, and then told Nurse Joy about the chip in Eevee's ear. Leave it to me. I will remove the chip in Eevee's ear, said Nurse Joy. Then Takuya contacted Erika and asked her to come to the Pokemon Center, and briefly described the process of finding Eevee. Miss Erika, can you tell me who did these things to Eevee? Takuya looked at Erika and asked seriously. Hey. Actually these are all done by Team Rocket. They use Eevee to do experiments to achieve their own goals. A while ago, Alliance discovered an underground base of Team Rocket in Rainbow City. During the destruction process, this Eevee also ran out. Erika didn't want to tell Takuya about Team Rocket. After all, this is not something that a child can participate in, but now Erika doesn't hide it and tells Takuya about Team Rocket, a huge villain organization. Team Rocket. Takuya gritted his teeth and said. Erika patted Takuya on the shoulder. Takuya, you have done a good job. Let Alliance take over Team Rocket. Miss Erika, I know, I just. Takuya did not continue to speak, because he knew that he was not worth mentioning in front of the giant Team Rocket. So, you have to strengthen yourself. Erika saw Takuya's thoughts and encouraged him. Since the EV issue has been resolved, I will be waiting for your challenge at the Rainbow Gym tomorrow. You have worked hard today, so take a good rest. Thank you, I understand. Takuya replied. Watching Erika leave the Pokemon Center, Takuya, who was a little upset, also walked out of the Pokemon Center. Shao I was worried and followed him. As they walked, they came to the game center in Rainbow City and exchanged 100 game coins. Takuya, who originally didn't know how to play video games, 6,666 won game coins with 100 game coins. 
Then he exchanged an Abra in the prize exchange, and his original upset mood gradually dissipated. Xiao Ai, let's go back. Takuya suddenly said to Xiao Ai who was following behind him. Seeing that Takuya had recovered his mood, Xiao Ai also smiled. Okay. Have a good rest and challenge the gym tomorrow. Walking on the road, Takuya shouted, Takuya figured it out, he must become stronger, and then protect the people and Pokemon he loves. Come on. Xiao Ai also shouted, and then they both laughed. The next morning, after breakfast, Takuya called out Bulbasaur and Beedrill. Both Pokemon were very happy that Takuya would use them to challenge the gym today. I'll leave the gym battle to you this time. Takuya said, looking at the two Pokemon. Bulbasaur and Beedrill both called out happily. Because the gym battle was in the afternoon, Takuya took them to special training. At lunchtime, Takuya saw that Xiao Ai had a bag in her hand, which contained a bottle of perfume. Takuya thought that Xiao Ai had already bought a bottle, and when did she go out and buy another bottle? Later, he found out that this bottle was a newly developed perfume, which was given to Xiao Ai by Erika. After lunch and a short rest, Takuya and Xiao Ai came to the Rainbow Gym, a building with the appearance of a huge gloom. Erika had already told her good sister and gym manager to wait for Takuya's arrival outside the gym. Hello, I'm Takuya from Pallet Town. I'm today's challenger. I'm here to challenge the Rainbow Gym. Takuya said politely. Hello, Erika has been waiting for you for a long time. Please follow me. The administrator said to Takuya. Takuya followed the administrator in and came to the battlefield. Takuya, welcome to the Rainbow Gym. The blue-haired Erika welcomed Takuya and Xiao Ai, this is the boy who caught Evie. Erika introduced them to everyone in the field. All the eyes of the people present were focused on Takuya, which made Takuya feel uncomfortable. So you are Takuya, so amazing. The gym was full of women, all of whom started talking about Takuya, and some asked about the whole story of Xiao Ai. I'm just a trainer who loves Pokemon. Takuya said modestly. Okay, everyone, be quiet. Mr. Takuya is here to challenge the gym. No matter what, let's start the gym battle first. What do you think, Mr. Takuya? The topic was brought up by Erika, and naturally Erika came to the rescue. But when Takuya heard Erika call him sir, he felt strange, he was only 10 years old. After a long time, the gym was quiet, and the gym match finally began. Takuya, it's exciting to play against you, but my Tangela was sick yesterday, so this game can only be 2v2. Erika said. Of course, no problem, then let's start. Takuya said. The game begins. The referee announced. Go, Weepinbell. Erika threw the Pokemon ball, and Weepinbell came out. It's Weepinbell. Then it's decided to be you, Bulbasaur. Takuya sent Bulbasaur. Taka. Bulbasaur shouted excitedly, this is its first gym battle. Takuya, you are really brave, using the grass type to challenge my grass type gym. Go, Weepinbell, use Razor Leaf, Erika launched an attack. Bulbasaur, let's use Razor Leaf too. Takuya ordered. Bulbasaur yelled and used Razor Leaf. Bulbasaur's Razor Leaf was extremely sharp after Takuya's training, and cut Weepinbell's Razor Leaf in half. No, Weepinbell, double team. Erika shouted. Weepinbell suddenly became nine, and Bulbasaur's Razor Leaf only hit one of the clones. Bulbasaur, use Leaf Flower Dance to attack all clones. Takuya ordered. Bulbasaur used the combination skill Leaf Flower Dance, which was launched in all directions this time, and Weepinbell was hit. Weepinbell. Erika shouted worriedly while admiring Takuya. She also saw the combination of the Flying Leaf Flower Dance. Takuya, I didn't expect you to let Bulbasaur practice this combination skill. This is the result of my and Bulbasaur's joint efforts. Takuya said lightly without being proud. Weepinbell stood up, panting. It seems that Weepinbell's physical strength is not very high. Okay, Weepinbell, use Vine Whip. Erika attacked again. Bulbasaur, we also use Vine Whip. Takuya shouted. Weepinbell and Bulbasaur's Vine Whip whipped each other in midair but it was obvious that Weepinbell's Vine Whip was thicker, and Bulbasaur's Vine Whip was thinner but faster, so they were evenly matched for a while, but in the end they were whipped by each other. Bulbasaur was fine, but Weepinbell showed a painful expression. Weepinbell has taken too much damage. It's hard for Erika's Weepinbell to win, said the administrator sitting next to Erika. Bulbasaur, use Leech Seed. 
Takuya shouted. Bulbasaur released a small leech seed that wrapped around Weepinbell, constantly absorbing Weepinbell's physical strength. After a while, Takuya saw that it was almost done, so he gave the order. Bulbasaur, Sunshine Flame, end the battle. Bulbasaur immediately gathered the energy of the sun. Because the sun was shining brightly today, the energy gathered very quickly. The sun flames hit Weepinbell. Weepinbell's physical strength had been consumed too much, and he was unable to dodge. He was hit by the sun flames and lost his ability to fight. Weepinbell lost his ability to fight. Bulbasaur won. The referee announced. Come back, Weepinbell, you've worked hard. Erika took back Weepinbell. You are really strong, no, I should say much stronger than normal trainer, but as a gym trainer, I will not give up the badge easily, go. Gloom. Erika sent out gloom. I seem to have heard this sentence somewhere. Takuya touched his head and complained, then took back Bulbasaur, come back. Bulbasaur, you've worked hard. It's your turn to play, Beedrill. Takuya threw the Pokemon ball. Kacha. The red Beedrill attracted the attention of everyone present as soon as he appeared. Red Beedrill, so rare. Someone in the audience said. Then the chattering discussion began again. Red Beedrill, so beautiful. I wonder how strong it is in combat. Erika said. Go, Gloom, you stink. It's not appropriate to describe my Beedrill as beautiful, Beedrill, pin missile. Takuya ordered. Gloom spit up the stink, but Beedrill used the pin missile from a distance. The sharp pin missile hit Gloom, and the explosive airflow also dispersed the stink, but if you smell it carefully, you can still smell some stink. Gloom, let's use flower dance. Erika shouted. Beedrill, protect. Takuya ordered. Beedrill immediately used protection to block Gloom's flower dance attack, and Gloom's attack had no effect at all. Gloom, leech seed. Erika ordered. Beedrill, quick attack. Takuya shouted. Beedrill moved quickly, avoiding leech seed and rushed towards Gloom. For a while, Gloom, used the stink. Erika ordered. Beedrill, aerial ace. Takuya shouted. Everyone present was stunned, even Erika didn't understand why Takuya let Beedrill just approach Gloom and then pull away again. But Takuya knew it in his heart. Beedrill took off quickly, and the airflow from the vibration of its wings drove Gloom's stink to follow behind, then turned in the air, and the two thorns merged, hitting Gloom with one blow, with excellent effect. End the battle, Beedrill, rush. Takuya shouted. Beedrill waved his twineedle and continued to attack Gloom until Gloom fell to the ground and lost his ability to fight. Gloom lost his ability to fight, Beedrill won, so the winner is Takuya. The referee announced. I lost. You are really strong. This is the rainbow badge, which means you won the rainbow gym. Erika said taking out a colorful badge from a box and handing it to Takuya. Thank you, I will continue to work hard. Takuya said. Takuya took the rainbow badge and put it in the badge box. Then Takuya said goodbye. Erika said she would stay to discuss the topic of perfume with Erika and return to the Pokemon Center later. Takuya had to return to the Pokemon Center alone. As soon as Takuya returned to the Pokemon Center, Nurse Joy found him. Your Eevee has woken up, but it won't let anyone get close now. Nurse Joy said. Please take me to see it. Takuya replied. Nurse Joy immediately took Takuya to the treatment room, where Eevee was grinning at Chansey. It's okay, everything is okay. Takuya squatted down, slowly approached Eevee, and stretched out his hands to form an embrace. Eevee saw that it was Takuya, and slowly put away his fierce look, then threw himself into Takuya's arms and started crying. Takuya patted Evie on the back. I will always be with you. With tears in his eyes, Evie licked the place where Takuya was bitten last time, then came out of Takuya's arms, touched the Pokemon ball on Takuya's waist, shook it, and then stopped moving. Takuya released Evie from the Pokemon ball. Evie, do you want to travel with me? Bui, stopped crying and Evie showed a sweet smile. It liked Takuya and wanted to travel with Takuya. In the evening, Xiaoai also returned to the Pokemon Center, spent 10,000 in the Pokemon Center, and the two continued their journey. Takuya and Xiaoai continued to move forward. On the way, they passed a town with a Pokemon breeding street. Xiaoai was very interested, so Takuya had to stop for two days to accompany Xiaoai to have a good look. During this period, 
Takuya asked Xiaoai if she had any dreams, such as becoming a Pokemon master, a Pokemon breeder, and a Pokemon coordinator trainer, etc. Xiaoai thought about it and replied that she just wanted to live a good life with her Eevee and see the beauty of this world. Well, a very simple, salty fish dream, Takuya couldn't complain. Then, Takuya and Xiaoai continued on their way. On the way, Takuya met a Hitmonchan who was practicing boxing. He had to subdue it and challenged Hitmonchan directly. Go, Lucario. Takuya wanted to make a quick decision and let Lucario take action directly. Hitmonchan felt the strength of Lucario and prepared for the battle. Go, Lucario. Takuya shouted, and he didn't prepare to command Lucario, and Lucario had to fight on his own. Lucario rushed over, Hitmonchan also rushed towards Lucario, Hitmonchan sent out fast punches repeatedly, Lucario also sent out fast punches to counterattack, Hitmonchan's punches were fast, Lucario was faster than it, dodged Hitmonchan's punches, Lucario hit Hitmonchan repeatedly, and then hit Hitmonchan with a right hook, Hitmonchan fell down, and then tried to get up again. Have some courage, stand up. An uncle ran out from nowhere and shouted, Hitmonchan, stand up, how can you participate in the P1 fighting competition if you can't win this? It turns out that this Hitmonchan has a trainer. Takuya thought. Hitmonchan, attack the right wing, fast, left hook, retreat, straight punch. Seeing Hitmonchan stand up, the uncle calmly commanded Hitmonchan, and the form of the battle suddenly changed to a certain extent. Lucario retreated to avoid Hitmonchan's attack. End it, Lucario, close combat. Takuya shouted. Lucario rushed forward and beat Hitmonchan with a close-range attack. At this time, the uncle's daughter Rebecca appeared. Dad, why are you boxing again? Do you want to participate in the fighting competition again? After Hitmonchan fell, the uncle picked up Hitmonchan and ignored his daughter and said to Takuya, You are very strong. Boy, I am looking forward to fighting with you in the P1 fighting competition. My name is Anthony, ha ha ha. After that, he walked away and ignored his daughter Rebecca's call. Takuya, what is the P1 fighting competition? Xiao I asked on the side. It is the first prize of the Pokemon fighting competition, referred to as P1. It is a fighting skills competition held specifically for Pokemon. Bruno of the Elite Four was once the champion of the P1 competition. Takuya explained. Is that so, then Takuya, you will definitely participate. Xiao I said. Yes, of course. Takuya said. Well, I heard you talking. You are going to participate in the P1 fighting tournament, right? Then please defeat my father. Rebecca bowed to Takuya and the others and said. Xiao I hurriedly asked Rebecca what was going on, and Rebecca explained to Xiao I why she didn't want her father to win, because Anthony only knew how to train every day to participate in the fighting tournament, and even ignored his family. Xiao Ai also felt that such a father was unreliable, and also asked Takuya for help. Takuya was very calm, because Lucario had easily defeated Hitmonchan just now. How to say it, in fact, compared to Lucario, Hitmonchan's strength is not that strong. Then Takuya and Xiao Ai went to register for the fighting tournament and then came to the Pokemon Center to rest for a night. The next day, the P1 fighting tournament started, and Takuya and the others met Anthony at the gate of the hall. You are here as expected, I look forward to playing with you. Anthony said and walked away. First, a series of preliminaries were held. Although not many people participated, it took a morning to decide the top eight of the fighting tournament. Takuya and Lucario swept all rivals and entered the top eight. The first match of the quarterfinals was a trainer who was extremely tall with a Shivaran against a trainer who used Mankey. From the beginning of the match, it was clear that the strength of Mankey and Shivaran was not on the same level. Mankey was suppressed by Shivaran throughout the game, and was finally kicked out of the ring by Shivaran easily. The second match was Anthony's Hitmonchan against Machamp. Machamp was hit by Hitmonchan's continuous mock punch, fell down and lost his fighting ability and was eliminated. The third match was Takuya and Lucario. Rival was a Machop. In front of Lucario, Machop's little power was completely ineffective. Takuya made Lucario use a close-range attack to win an advance to the semi-finals. The fourth match was Graveler against Geodude. The result is predictable. Graveler won easily. After a short break, we entered the semi-finals. The first match of the semi-finals was between Hitmonchan and Shivaran. 
Both sides were very strong. At the beginning, they punched and kicked each other, but in the end, Hitmonchan was stronger and defeated Shivaran to win. The second match was between Takuya's Lucario and Graveler. Graveler was more resistant to attack. He was not able to fight even after Lucario's close-range attack. Then he was knocked down by Lucario's mock punch. After a short break, it was the final match. Takuya faced Anthony and Lucario faced Hitmonchan. The bell rang and the match began. Go, Hitmonchan. Continuous mock punch. Anthony took the initiative. Lucario, first decision. Takuya also issued the same order from the audience. On the stage, Lucario's eyes glowed blue, and he swiftly avoided Hamanchan's straight punches. Sky punch. Takuya continued. After Lucario avoided Hamanchan's straight punch, he hit Hitmonchan with an uppercut, and Hitmonchan fell to the ground. In fact, Takuya is a layman and doesn't know much about fighting competition. Takuya is now treating this game as a Pokemon battle, but he is restricted to using fighting skills, otherwise the opponent Hitmonchan will soon be defeated by Lucario. Hitmonchan stood up immediately, but Lucario's sky punch was very powerful and still caused some damage to Hitmonchan. You are quite good, Hitmonchan, don't lose, use the right hook mock punch. Anthony ordered. This time, before Takuya gave an order, Lucario moved by himself. Lucario first used the preemptive squat to avoid Hitmonchan's right hook, and then followed with another move, low kick Hamanchan to the ground, and then used a close range attack, and a series of fast punches directly knocked Hamanchan out. Takuya touched his head, okay, just watch the show, I didn't expect the situation of this fighting game to be so one-sided. Hitmonchan, stand up, don't give up. Anthony shouted. Lucario used the tile cut and rushed towards Hitmonchan quickly. Hitmonchan, get out of the way. Anthony shouted. Hitmonchan took a step to the left to avoid Lucario's tile cut, but Lucario immediately used the million-ton flying kick and kicked Hitmonchan out of the ring, and then Hitmonchan's eyes were filled with vortices. Dang dang dang. The game is over, Takuya's Lucario defeated Anthony's Hitmonchan with an overwhelming advantage, and the champions of this P1 fighting competition are Takuya and Lucario. The host shouted excitedly. Where did you see these fighting skills? They are amazing. Takuya walked towards Lucario and asked happily. Lu, why should I tell you? Lucario said proudly. Good guy, so arrogant, but Lucario still happily hugged Takuya. Takuya personally put the championship belt of the P1 fighting competition on Lucario. Afterwards, Anthony told Takuya that Takuya's Lucario had a fighting talent and wanted Takuya to give Lucario to him. Takuya and Lucario decisively refused. Their goal was not just that. Their future was to stand on the top of the world. Then they rested in the town for a day. Xiao Ai made a delicious meal to reward Takuya and Lucario, and continued their journey the next day. Walking on the road, Takuya's chest pocket began to flash colorful Lucas. Xiao Ai saw it and said, Takuya, why is your chest always shining? Takuya then discovered it, opened his pocket, took out the rainbow feather from it, and sent the rainbow-colored Lucas to the east. Takuya, what is this? Xiao Ai asked curiously. Rainbow feather, ho-o -oh feather. Looking at the flashing rainbow feather in his hand, Takuya was stunned. What does this mean? Takuya couldn't help thinking. Lu, Takuya, what's wrong with you? Lucario asked. Xiao Ai also looked at Takuya with curiosity. The rainbow feather seems to be guiding me forward. Takuya was not sure. The rainbow feather is guiding you, does that mean we can see Ho-Oh? So happy to see the legendary Pokemon. Xiao Ai said happily, and then immediately grabbed Takuya's arm and walked in the direction of the rainbow feather. Takuya, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Hey, hey, Xiao Ai, why are you in a hurry? Takuya hurriedly put back the rainbow feather, staggering and being dragged away by Xiao Ai, Lucario followed the two helplessly. The setting sun stretched Takuya's shadow, and two red circles of light suddenly appeared in the shadow. Marshadow half emerged from Takuya's shadow, and then took a close look at Takuya. Lu, Lucario suddenly looked back, but there was nothing behind him. Lucario, what are you doing? Hurry up and catch up. Takuya's voice came from the front. Lu, I'm coming. Takuya and Xiao Ai traveled all the way and came to a forest. There was a Pokemon center in the forest, just in time to spend a night here. 
After entering the Pokemon Center, Takuya went to contact his mother first. Mom, Takuya said. Takuya, you are finally willing to contact me. Guangzi said angrily, it's very troublesome to leave a message in advance for all the Pokemon centers you may go to. Looking at the angry mother, Takuya was also a little embarrassed. Mom, what is so important? Even if there is nothing important, you should contact me. Guangzi said, really, you are like this, and your father is like this too. You never contact me. Is it difficult to contact occasionally? At this time, Lucario walked to Takuya's side. When Mitsuko saw Lucario, she immediately greeted him, Lucario, are you okay? Lu, what? I'm going to hang up now. Takuya said helplessly. Wait a minute, did you eat well? Mitsuko said. Yes, I ate well. Takuya said. You can't not eat more vegetables. Did you wash your clothes well? You didn't wear dirty clothes. Mitsuko said. All that is fine, mom. Takuya said. At this time, a man ran in with a wounded water Pokemon and said hurriedly, Sorry, Nurse Joy, I'll leave this guy to you, my water Pokemon. Let me see, it's a serious injury, what happened? Nurse Joy asked. Entei appeared. The man said. Entei. Takuya, who is still on the phone, heard the change of attention. Mom, sorry, I'm going to hang up now. I thought I must have conquered it, but, the man said. It's okay, it will recover soon. Nurse Joy said and entered the treatment room with the water Pokemon. Please. Then many people slowly surrounded the man, and Takuya hung up the phone and walked up. Entei means that, Takuya asked. Well, the legendary Pokemon, it is obviously a rare Pokemon that is hard to come by, it's really strong. My water Pokemon was defeated in an instant, and then it disappeared into the forest. It should still be nearby. Takuya thought, and then turned and ran outside. Lucario, let's go. Shao I, you wait for me at the Pokemon Center, I'm going out. Takuya shouted to Shao I. Hey, Takuya, where are you going? Before Shao I finished speaking, Takuya ran out and disappeared, and then those who heard the news ran into the forest one after another. I'm the one who captured it. I'll be the first one to find Entei. Lucario, can you find Entei? Takuya asked as he ran out of the Pokemon Center and followed Lucario. Lu, I'll try. Lucario closed his eyes and sensed the situation in the forest. Road, this way. Takuya immediately changed direction after hearing Lucario's voice. After running for a while, he saw Entei standing on a boulder, staring at Takuya. Found it. Takuya said, Lucario, please, Aura Sphere. The running Lucario immediately launched an Aura Sphere at Entei, but Entei jumped high to avoid the Aura Sphere and jumped behind Takuya. Takuya turned around and looked at Entei. Takuya stepped back a few steps, Lucario, Aura Sphere. Entei jumped again, avoided the Aura Sphere, and jumped again to stand on the previous boulder, but his eyes were always on Takuya. Suddenly, Entei opened his mouth and used a powerful flamethrower. Lucario, back off. Takuya hurriedly asked Lucario to back off. Hurry, Entei is here. In the distance, the sound of others rushing overcame. Entei roared, looked deeply at Takuya through the flames, and then left and disappeared into the forest. Forget it, Lucario, don't chase me. Takuya stopped Lucario who was still trying to chase him, we are not Entei's rival yet. Takuya still knew this. Back to the Pokemon Center, Xiao I immediately went to meet Takuya when she saw him coming back. So, did you find Entei? Xiao I asked. I found it, but it's not rival at all. Takuya said helplessly, but I took a photo. Really? Show me. Xiao I said happily. So Takuya took out the Pokedex and showed Xiao I the photo of Entei he had taken. Takuya, how did Entei appear in this world? Looking at the photo of Entei, Xiao I asked curiously. According to the ancient documents I read in Professor Oak's laboratory, it is said that Entei's life was given by Ho-Oh. Takuya smiled, and then found a picture of Ho-Oh in Pokedex and showed it to Xiao I. Ho-Oh. Xiao I was a little confused. That's right. Takuya nodded. 150 years ago, the bell tower where Ho-Oh had contact with humans was burned by Bolt Strike. The raging fire was extinguished by the sudden downpour. Then in the fire, three unknown Pokemon were burned to death. At this time, Ho-Oh came and gave them life to revive them. The three are the lightning that hit the tower, 
Raiko, the fire that burned the tower, Entei, and the rain that extinguished the fire in the tower, Suikun. It is said that these three are their incarnations. It sounds so powerful. Xiao Ai's eyes sparkled. We are so lucky to see Entei. Takuya continued, Ho Oh, who is in charge of the lives of Pokemon, gives them a mission to walk in this world. Takuya took out the rainbow feather. I saw Ho Oh at the beginning of my journey. This thing fell down at that time. Although Ho Oh rarely appears in front of humans, it is said that it will give rainbow feathers to very few humans who are interested in it. Takuya said slowly. So, Takuya, you are chosen by Ho Oh. Xiao Ai was surprised, but what is the use of the rainbow feather? Takuya shook his head. I am not sure, but there is such a legend that the person who is guided by the rainbow feather to see Ho-Oh will become the rainbow warrior. The rainbow warrior, although I don't understand, it seems very powerful. Xiao Ai said. While Takuya and Xiao Ai were chatting, a figure in the shadow kept touching and paying attention to Takuya. Okay, have a good rest tonight, and we will continue our journey tomorrow. Takuya said to Xiao Ai. That night, it rained heavily outside. Listening to the sound of rain outside, Takuya fell asleep on the bed. Mar Shadow emerged from Takuya's shadow and stared at Takuya carefully. Suddenly, Takuya turned over, and Mar Shadow was startled, and went back into the shadow and disappeared. The next morning, Takuya and Xiao Ai carried their luggage and continued their journey. They walked out of the forest, stood on the edge of the cliff, and looked at the rainbow that appeared after the rain. It is said that Ho-Oh lives under the rainbow. Takuya said, and then the rainbow feather on his chest lit up again, facing the rainbow, the Lucas of the rainbow feather became more gorgeous, the guidance of the rainbow feather. What's over there? Xiao Ai asked curiously, and then took out her Pokemon navigator and opened the map, the Uniang Mountains with steep peaks connected to each other, Takuya, let's go, let's go in that direction, maybe you are really the rainbow warrior. That's not necessarily true, there is another person who also got the rainbow feather with me. Takuya said. Who is it? Xiao Ai asked. You know it, Ash. Takuya replied. Let's go, let's go find Ho Oh. What exactly is the legendary rainbow warrior like, I want to confirm it myself. Yeah. The Lucas of the rainbow feather dissipated, Takuya put away the rainbow feather, and went towards the direction of the rainbow with Xiao Ai. We continued walking in the forest. It was already dark. Takuya was already sleeping in his sleeping bag. Lucario was standing on a branch and resting against the trunk. Xiao Ai was sitting by the lake. The light from her phone shone on her innocent face. She flipped through photos of her and Takuya during the trip. Seeing some funny photos of Takuya, Xiao Ai couldn't help laughing. Then she immediately covered her mouth and looked back at Takuya in the sleeping bag. Fortunately, she didn't wake him up. She kept flipping through the earliest photo. A woman was wearing a hospital gown and sitting in a wheelchair. She smiled and looked at the camera. Xiao Ai smiled and lowered her head with tears in her eyes. A fallen leaf fell into the lake, and then ripples appeared. Xiao Ai looked up. Not far away, Suikun was looking at her. A gust of north wind blew, making Xiao Ai unable to open her eyes for a while. When Xiao Ai opened her eyes, Suikun had disappeared. The next day, Suikun, Takuya was surprised. Yeah, I saw it. Xiao Ai replied. The fact that I can meet Suikun shows that Xiao Ai is a gentle person. Takuya smiled. When I met Suikun's eyes, time seemed to stop. I didn't even have time to make a sound. Xiao Ai looked up at the sky. Aren't we lucky? We met Suikun right after Entei. Takuya said. Yes. Mom will be happy for me. Xiao Ai said. Yes, your mother will definitely be happy for you. Takuya remembered that Xiao Ai told him that her mother had passed away, so he didn't say anything more. Yes. Uniang Town, this is the town closest to the Uniang Mountains, in the Battle Square. Jigglypuff, double slap. Fatty commanded Jigglypuff. Charmander, avoid and use flamethrower. Ash commanded Charmander. Charmander jumped up to avoid Jigglypuff's double slap and then Flamethrower directly hit Jigglypuff and set off a small explosion. Jigglypuff loses the ability to fight, Ash wins. Makoto announced the result of the battle. Good job, Charmander. Ash shouted happily. Pikachu and the round penguin shouted happily on the side. Charmander also shouted happily and ran towards Ash, then evolved into Charmeleon and jumped on Ash. 
Evolved into Charmeleon, great. Ash said happily. Ash, long time no see. Takuya, who came to Uniang Town, saw Ash and came forward to say hello. Ash was stunned for a moment before letting Charmeleon get up from him. Long time no see, Takuya. A new partner. Hello, my name is Takuya, and I'm from Pallet Town like Ash. Takuya greeted the two people around Ash. Hello, I'm Xiao Ai. Xiao Ai also came forward to say hello. Takuya, Xiao Ai, let me introduce you, this is Makoto, this is Soji, and they have a Lucario like you, maybe you have something in common. Ash introduced the boy and girl around him. Hello, Xiao Ai and Takuya said. Hello, said Soji and Seiko. Takuya asked where Xiaoging and Misty were, and Ash told Takuya that they had to go back temporarily because of family matters. Takuya and Soji's Lucario also greeted each other in a friendly manner, and soon the group of people got to know each other. Takuya's Lucario and Soji's Lucario are different colors. Seiko said. Takuya's Lucario is a rare flash Pokemon. Xiao Ai said. It's okay. Takuya smiled. The group of people chatted happily. Soji and Takuya had more things to talk about because they were both Lucario trainers, and they were also knowledgeable. When talking about why Takuya and Xiao Ai came here, Takuya took out his rainbow feather, and Ash and others understood, and then Ash also took out the rainbow feather. I didn't expect that there were two trainers that Ho'o liked at the same time. Soji said in surprise. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that Takuya and I got the rainbow feather at the same time. Ash touched his head embarrassedly. Everyone had the same destination, so they made an appointment to have dinner together. In the evening, in the Pokemon Center, Takuya and Ash called their mothers and introduced their new companions. Then Takuya and Soji studied the same book together in the library of the Pokemon Center. Takuya, Soji, do you know anything? Ash came over and asked, followed by Xiao Ai and Seiko. Well, this book is very powerful. It has been fully investigated. Listen carefully to what Soji tells you. Takuya said to the three of them. Then Soji began to talk about the content of the book. The book says that Ho-Oh can feel the happy waveguide emitted by humans and Pokemon from high altitudes and gain energy from it. On the contrary, it will be taken away by the evil waveguide. Soji turned another page. The book was painted with the evil black feather. Seiko asked, what is this? Rainbow feathers, when they come into contact with the evil heart, they will lose their luster. Soji said. Evil heart. Xiao Ai said. Lose its luster. Ash said, and then took out the rainbow feather. My rainbow feather is fine. That's right, because Ash is a simple and reckless person, and he doesn't have any evil heart. Chung Ji joked. I'm not bragging, I won't lose in simplicity and recklessness. Ash said confidently. PFF. Takuya couldn't help laughing, and everyone else followed suit. Hey, stop laughing. Ash said angrily. While Takuya and the others were laughing, a man behind a bookshelf in the library silently wrote down everything Soji said. The next day, Pikachu swung Iron Tail and rushed towards Snorlax. Snorlax jumped high to avoid Iron Tail, and then fell and used Body Slam. Pikachu, Iron Tail. Ash shouted. Snorlax pressed Pikachu hard under him, and then Pikachu screamed and knocked Snorlax away again. Pikachu, Thunderbolt. Ash shouted. Thunderbolt directly hit Snorlax flying in the air. Snorlax fell down and splashed a cloud of dust, and then lost his ability to fight. Snorlax lost his ability to fight, Ash won. When the referee shouted, the audience applauded. Win, Ash said, and then Pikachu ran over and high-fived Ash with his tail. So who will be the next rival of the victorious Ash? The referee asked the people present. Round Penguin, let's go. Just as Makoto was about to go on stage, someone stood up. I'll do it. A brown-yellow boy with sharp eyes walked out of the crowd with a Lycanroc. Cross. Makoto clenched his fist. His name is Cross. Takuya asked. Yes, how come you know him, Takuya? Soji answered. I met him once. At that time, I saw him release Charmander in the forest. Then because it was raining heavily, we hurried to take a quick look and left. Takuya said. Is it him who abandoned Charmander? Soji asked. Abandoned Charmander? Takuya couldn't help asking. Makoto nodded. On the field. You seem to have subdued that useless Charmander. Cross said to Ash. There are no useless Pokemon, come out. 
Charmeleon. Ash said. Charmeleon came out and screamed, then was stunned when she saw Cross. Evolved. But even if it evolved, the weak guy is still weak. Cross sneered. No, it will become stronger when it works with trainer. Ash retorted. Cross sneered. Come out. My strongest fire type Pokemon, Incineroar Torms. Cross sent Incineroar, who screamed as soon as he appeared, and then looked at Ash's Charmeleon with disdain. Who is that? Makoto said. It's Incineroar. Takuya replied. Come on. Cross said disdainfully. Charmeleon, flamethrower. Ash began to give orders. Charmeleon sprayed flames and hit Incineroar, who was blocking his body with his hands, and the explosion produced smoke. So, Ash said. Incineroar drooped and suffered some damage. Charmeleon, slash. Ash attacked immediately. Charmeleon showed his claws and rushed towards Incineroar. Incineroar blocked with both hands again, but was knocked back two meters by Charmeleon. Very good. Ash clenched his fists, but Incineroar did not fall down, and stood up. How strange. Soji, who was watching the battle, wondered, and Seiko looked back at Soji. The battle continued, and Ash shouted, Go, Charmeleon, seismic toss. Charmeleon rushed over, hugged Incineroar's legs and jumped up, then turned three times in the air and threw Incineroar down hard. Incineroar was hit on the ground and rolled several times before stopping, but still stood up panting. Almost, Incineroar. Charmeleon, flamethrower. Ash ordered. We also use flamethrower. Cross said. Charmeleon and Incineroar used flamethrower on each other, but Incineroar's flamethrower was obviously more powerful than Charmeleon's, and it suppressed Charmeleon directly. Charmeleon. Ash said worriedly. Charmeleon fell to the ground and stood up with difficulty. Fire ability. Takuya said. Yes, that's it. Soji continued that Incineroar increased the power of the move by taking damage. In other words, it took the attack on purpose. Makoto was surprised. Charmeleon, flamethrower. Ash continued to order. But Charmeleon opened her mouth, but flamethrower could not be used, as if it was choked by its own flames. Too hasty, Charmeleon is not used to the power after evolution. Soji said, we can't rely on superpower to fight here. Fire Fang. Cross commanded Incineroar to start the attack. Incineroar ran on all fours and used Fire Fang, hitting Charmeleon who was not fully prepared. Throat Chop. Cross continued to shout. Incineroar used Throat Chop and hit Charmeleon's throat with one blow, knocking it out of the battlefield. Charmeleon broke through the flower bed, stood up with difficulty and slowly walked back to the battlefield. It's over, Cross Chop. Cross ordered. How can I lose to you, flamethrower? Ash shouted. Too reluctant, Ash. Soji shouted while watching. Incineroar used Cross Chop to knock Charmeleon, who could not use Flamethrower, out of the battlefield again, losing her ability to fight. Charmeleon. Ash ran to Charmeleon worriedly. Charmeleon lost her ability to fight, Incineroar won. Soji and Seiko also ran to Ash's side. You are really too naive. You rely on cheap friendship and let Pokemon taste the humiliation of defeat because of bad command. You are the worst trainer. No, you are not qualified to be a trainer at all. Cross also walked to the side of Ash and said loudly. Ash gritted his teeth and looked at Cross, took back Charmeleon, and ran towards the Pokemon Center in disappointment. Soji and Seiko immediately chased after him. Are Ash and Charmeleon okay? Xiao I worriedly said, Takuya, you. I admit Ash's naivety and his bad command, but the qualifications of a trainer and the friendship with Pokemon are not up to you. Takuya looked at Cross coldly. Who are you? Cross asked coldly. A trainer who has cheap friendship with Pokemon in your mouth, my name is Takuya, remember it. Takuya said calmly. Hee hee, then come on. Cross chuckled. Incineroar, come back and rest, Lycanroc, you go. Cross took back Incineroar who had consumed more than half of his physical strength, and sent out Lycanroc. Come out, Charmeleon. Takuya sent out Charmeleon. Tisk, Charmeleon again, Lycanroc, Stone Edge. Cross shouted. Charmeleon, Dragon Claw. Takuya ordered. Lycanroc controlled the sharp stones to fly towards Charmeleon. Charmeleon stretched out the Dragon Claw and smashed all the sharp stones into pieces with one blow, then rushed towards Lycanroc and scratched him with one blow. Counter. Cross shouted. Charmeleon, Iron Tail. Takuya said. 
Lycanroc used counter to return the damage caused by Charmeleon's dragon claw to Charmeleon, but Charmeleon would never let Lycanroc do what he wanted. Iron Tail lit up and swung quickly, hitting Lycanroc directly and sending him flying. Flamethrower. Takuya continued to shout, he would not give rival any chance to breathe. Lycanroc, who had not yet stood up, was hit by Flamethrower again, causing huge damage. How can he be so strong? Cross pouted. So this is all you have. Takuya mocked lightly. It's not over yet, Lycanroc, Shadow Ball. Cross shouted. Charmeleon, Dragon Pulse. Takuya said. Lycanroc stood up and fired Shadow Balls at Charmeleon. Charmeleon opened her mouth and spit up the purple Dragon Pulse, blowing up all the Shadow Balls in the air from left to right. Go over, Dragon Claw. Takuya shouted. Lycanroc, Shadow Ball, stop Charmeleon from approaching. Cross commanded. Charmeleon lit up the green dragon claw, nimbly avoided the shadow balls of Lycanroc, and pressed Lycanroc into the soil of the venue with one claw. Lycanroc. Cross said worriedly. Charmeleon retreated to Takuya and stared at the dust gradually dispersing. Lycanroc stood with his head down, still not losing his fighting ability. Suddenly, Lycanroc raised his head, and his originally red eyes became deeper. It's going berserk, Takuya said to himself but it's still not enough. Lycanroc, attack like crazy. Cross shouted. Lycanroc, who had gone berserk, still retained a little self-awareness. Hearing Cross's command, he rushed towards Charmeleon frantically, waving his claws constantly. But as Takuya said, this was not enough. Charmeleon retreated while avoiding Lycanroc's claws. Charmeleon, iron tail, suppress Lycanroc, and then use flamethrower. Takuya shouted. Charmeleon, who was still dodging, lit up Iron Tail, turned around and swung it to press the Berserk Lycanroc to the ground. However, Lycanroc's Berserk power increased and he couldn't break free from Charmeleon's tail. Charmeleon opened his mouth and used Flamethrower again, hitting Lycanroc at close range to produce a strong explosion. Soon, the smoke dissipated, and Lycanroc fell to the ground and lost his ability to fight. Lycanroc lost his ability to fight, Charmeleon won. The referee said. I lost. Cross couldn't believe that he lost. Thank you for your hard work, Charmeleon. Charmeleon yelled in response to Takuya, who took Charmeleon back without even looking at Cross, and walked towards the Pokemon Center with Xiao Ai. The Pokemon you deposited has recovered. Nurse Joy said, and then handed Charmeleon's Pokemon Ball to Ash. Thank you. Ash said, without any emotion in his voice. Cheer up. Makoto comforted. Pika. Ash walked out of the Pokemon Center silently, followed by Makoto and Soji. That guy was definitely wrong as a trainer, so I have no reason to lose, but. Ash lowered his head. But we can't completely deny his belief. In fact, he and Incineroar came together because of the belief of becoming stronger. Soji said. But it's strange that a guy like that can win. Ash turned around and said angrily. First of all, you have to honestly admit the fact that you lost. Soji said. It's because you feel unwilling to lose that you think you must win next time and work hard. Said Makoto. Of course I know this, but. Ash continued to walk forward with his head down, and suddenly froze for a moment. Maybe we can win if we go on Pikachu. Isn't Charmeleon very pitiful when you say this? Makoto replied. Ash, I really didn't expect you to say this. Takuya, who returned to the Pokemon Center, walked up and said. Takuya, are you here to laugh at me too? Ash said angrily. The Ash who grew up with me is not like you now. Takuya grabbed Ash's collar and scolded. If you only care about winning or losing, then you are no different from Cross. Soji continued. Ash clenched his fists, leave me alone. He slapped Takuya's hand holding his collar and ran away. Ash, wait a minute. Soji and Makoto followed immediately. Takuya, are you going too far? Xiao I whispered. Xiao I, you know, Ash, Gary and I grew up with Arnold. Although Gary and I always bully Ash, he is also the most worrying one among us. Ash is too simple. We are always afraid that he will be bullied when we are not with him. Solacian's willfulness always makes us feel that we are disappointed with Ash. Takuya said, but now it's okay. Ash has made good friends. I believe that Ash will wake up by himself. I understand. Shall I believed Takuya's words, just as Takuya believed in Ash, then we have to catch up. 
Let's go, he is really a worrying guy. Marshadow glanced at Takuya in the shadow and disappeared again. Pikachu. Pikachu, do you want to say that I'm wrong? Walking in the forest, Ash turned back to Pikachu and said, By the way, it would be nice if the first Pokemon was Bulbasaur or Squirtle. Ash was suddenly stunned. Marshadow was observing Ash in the shadow. Ash accelerated forward and left Pikachu alone. Pikachu did not follow Ash. I am the Rainbow Warrior, the one chosen by Ho-Oh. Ash leaned against a tree, took out the rainbow feather and slowly squatted down. In another tree, Takuya and Lucario were hiding quietly. Marshadow looked at Takuya in Takuya's shadow, then moved to Ash's shadow, and then hypnotized Ash with Psychic to make him fall into his own dream. The rainbow feather fell from Ash's hand and slowly lost its luster. Lu, what kind of Pokemon is that? I'll go and drive it away. Lucario felt Marshadow's wave and said. Lucario, don't go out. We just need to stay here and protect Ash. Takuya whispered, Marshadow, I hope you don't hurt Ash. After an unknown amount of time, everyone found Ash, and Pikachu stood in front of Ash. Pikachu. Ash shouted and woke up from his dream. Pika. Pikachu, Pikachu moved his ears and called softly. Pikachu. Tears welled up in Ash's eyes, and he hugged Pikachu. Pikachu, it's my fault, I'm sorry, I. I. The rainbow feather that fell beside him bloomed into the original Lucas, and Makoto picked up the rainbow feather and handed it to Ash. Ash, here you go. Makoto said. Thank you. Ash said, putting away the rainbow feather. Really, you made us look for so long. Makoto lectured. Yes, I'm sorry. Ash whispered. Do you want to win all the battles? Losing is the real test of a trainer, I think so. Soji said. Yeah. Ash nodded and took out Charmeleon's Pokemon ball. Charmeleon, I'm sorry. Excuse me, have you seen Takuya? Xiao I suddenly interrupted. Is Takuya not with you? Makoto asked. Originally they were together, but Takuya disappeared after I caught up with you. Xiao I said, but her eyes unconsciously glanced behind the tree. Takuya then walked out from behind the tree. You found Ash, sorry, I got lost in the forest. Takuya touched his head and said. Takuya, you have come to this day. Ash, who had recovered, joked. Ha, it's not just to find you. Takuya complained. Then the two looked at each other and laughed. Everyone thought of Courtney and sat around. I don't want to forget the existence of Pokemon, even if it's a dream. After hearing Ash's dream of a world without Pokemon, Meng Chengji said. But there will be times when you lose Pokemon. Soji said, and then recalled the past, my parents are often not at home because of work. Luxray is like my parents normal who always takes care of me. We are together at all times, but there was only one day when I went out alone. It was snowing heavily outside. I lost my way in the forest. Just when I was frozen by the wind and snow and fainted, Luxray found me and used its body to keep me warm. I also fell asleep slowly in that warmth, but when the wind and snow heard it the next day, Luxray had already left this world. Since then, I have become afraid to be too friendly with Pokemon, but it was the encounter with Lucario that saved me like that. Is that so? Ash seemed to understand a lot. The companions you miss are always in your heart. Takuya suddenly said. That's right. Xiao I touched Eevee's head and agreed. Marshadow smiled and emerged from Ash's shadow, but was immediately discovered by Pikachu, who then returned to the shadow. What was that? Ash asked. Pokemon. Seiko said. Pikachu's cheeks radiated electricity, and he took a fighting stance towards Shadow. Thunderbolt hit Shadow, but it didn't force Marshadow out, but instead woke up the Infernape sleeping in the tree. It's Infernape. Once you them off, there's nothing you can do. Soji said. Everyone didn't dare to make any extra moves, watching Infernapes surround them, then lifted Takuya and the others up, throwing them into the air over and over again, as if celebrating. What's going on? Xiao I and Seiko said together. Ash, let Metapod out, Soji reminded. Why? Ash asked. If you attack them randomly, it will only them off even more, Soji said. Ash jumped away as he fell called out Metapod from the Pokemon Ball, then picked up Metapod and circled around the Infernapes. Metapod, string shot. Ash ordered. Metapod spit out silk and tied up the Infernapes tightly. Don't be so angry, Infernape. Makoto said helplessly. 
Everyone stood up quickly and ran to the front. Metapod, good job. Ash praised. Metapod, who was held in Ash's arms, suddenly emitted the light of evolution and successfully evolved into Butterfree. The Infernapes that were originally tied up also broke free from the silk and chased after them. They caught up. Xiao I said. Gastroli, come out, use hypnosis. Takuya immediately called out Ghastly. Butterfree, let's use sleep powder too. Ash shouted. Ghastly and Butterfree used hypnosis and sleep powder at the same time, successfully hypnotizing the Infernapes to sleep. That's amazing, Butterfree. Ash praised. Okay Ash, let's go now. Takuya shouted, and then took back Ghastly. Hearing Takuya's shout, Ash hurriedly followed. After running for a while, a river appeared in front of them. Leave it to me, come out. Lapras. Makoto kissed the Pokemon ball and released Lapras. But Lapras can only carry three people, so Takuya had to release Gyarados. Come out. Gyarados. Takuya threw the Pokemon ball. Looking at Takuya's golden Gyarados, Soji sighed, Takuya, how many flash Pokemon do you have? Three, and a red Beedrill. Takuya said and jumped on Gyarados. As the river went upstream, the sky gradually brightened, and the Unying Mountains were getting closer and closer. When they got on land, they encountered a Fero attacking a pink Butterfree, and then Ash sent his Butterfree to successfully save the beauty. Arrived at the edge of Unying Lake, Soji took out the navigator and said to the Unying Mountains, under the rainbow, the Unying Mountains. Wow. Everyone looked at the mountains in amazement. At this time, Takuya and Ash's rainbow feathers lit up at the same time. The two took out the rainbow feathers, and the rainbow feathers sent out a rainbow to the highest peak of the Unying Mountains. That's the highest peak of the mountain range, Tianqing Mountain. Soji said. You want us to go there? Xiao I asked. It should be. Soji said. We will see Ho-Oh -Oh again soon. Ash said excitedly. Let's go, Pikachu. Lucario, we can't lose to Ash. Takuya said to Lucario. Ash, Takuya, wait for us. Xiao I shouted. In the evening, at the foot of the Unying Mountains, in the afterglow of the setting sun, groups of Butterfree danced here. What a spectacular sight. Chung Ji said excitedly, there are so many Butterfree. Come out too. Ash released the Butterfree. Ash's Butterfree looked around, and soon the pink Butterfree came over and danced in the air with Ash's Butterfree. Isn't this the child we helped before? Chung Ji said. Really? Ash said. Before this time, Butterfree will gather together and migrate south to reproduce. Soji looked at Ash's Butterfree flying around the pink Butterfree and said. Look, Ash's Butterfree is also, that is a courtship dance, it seems that the courtship was successful. Well done, Butterfree. Ash encouraged. But if you migrate south like this, you will have to say goodbye. Chung Ji said slowly. Looking at the Butterfree group flying south, Ash said slowly, I don't want that. Butterfree is an important companion. I don't want to be separated. That's right. Makoto turned her head away. Ash, make your own decision. Soji advised. Takuya and Xiao I watched Ash make his own choice quietly. Butterfree flew in front of Ash and kept calling. Hey, what do you want to do? Say goodbye to us and go south with that kid. Ash asked hoarsely. Butterfree glanced at Ash, then looked back at the object he liked, and then hid behind Ash. Ash also looked at the two Butterfree hesitating, lowered his head, and seemed to have made a decision, then let's go south. If we don't hurry, everyone will leave. Ash pulled Butterfree to the pink Butterfree. This guy is a great guy, I'll leave it to you. Finally, everyone said goodbye to each other. Be friendly. Xiao I waved and shouted. Be careful on the road. Takuya also shouted. Butterfree, you must take care of yourself. Ash left tears and said goodbye to his companions. Finally, the Butterfrees disappeared in the soaring in the sky in the south. It's gone. Takuya said. Yes, but it's great to meet it. Even if we're separated, we're still good friends. Ash wiped away tears. Although we trainers can breed Pokemon, we can't give birth to new life. Soji said. Suddenly, Pikachu's cheek sensed the power of lightning, and Takuya and Soji's Lucario also turned back at the same time. Raiko was looking down at them on the cliff behind. It's Raiko. Takuya shouted. Raiko roared and summoned lightning. The people who were struck by lightning couldn't open their eyes for a while. When everyone could open their eyes, Raiko had disappeared. 
Walking on the hillside of Tianqing Mountain, the Pokemon on the cliff looked at Takuya and his group restlessly. Don't you think the wild Pokemon are a little restless? Makoto said. That's right. Soji said. That's right, because they want to get power from Ho-Oh, so they gather together. An old man with a big beard jumped down from the stone and said, although it's very faint, I smell the smell of Ho-Oh. Could it be? Takuya said, and then he and Ash took out the rainbow feather together. Wow, rainbow feather. The old man opened his eyes wide. Hey, do you know? Xiao I said. You are the author of that book. Soji pointed at the old man and said, the name seems to be. You can just call me Master Fan. Master Fan stroked his beard and smiled. I have been looking for the traces of Ho-Oh for the past 20 years. 20 consecutive years. Makoto asked. I collected and sorted out various data, and speculated that the next place where Ho-Oh would appear would be this mountain, so I came here to confirm it, said Fan Yi. Then let's go together. Chung Ji invited Fan Yi. Next, let's go to see Ho-Oh together. Ash said. Yes. Fan Yi nodded, but this light is just like the light of youth, and it is too dazzling for the old Lai Shui now. Everyone headed towards the top of the mountain together, and Takuya told Fan Yi about meeting Entei, Suicune, and Raiko on the way. The reason why you can meet the legendary Pokemon Entei Suicune and Raiko is probably because of the Rainbow Feather. Maybe you want to confirm whether the boy is qualified to become the Rainbow Warrior, but I didn't expect the two of them were chosen as the Rainbow Warrior by Ho-Oh this time. Fan Yi said. We. Ash pointed at himself and Takuya and said. Speaking of this, there should be a shadow guide following you. Fan Yi continued. Ash turned around and looked at his shadow and said, I do feel that way. Is it still here? That's the phantom Pokemon, Marshadow. Takuya said. Marshadow. Soji asked. Yeah. Fan Yi nodded. It is said that the shadow guide will block and correct everything when the rainbow fades. Takuya, if you know why didn't you say it before? Ash asked. I just read it in a book, I'm not sure. Takuya replied. At this time, the originally heavy fog on Tianqing Mountain gradually dissipated under the sunshine, and Takuya and Ash's rainbow feathers once again sent out Lucas. It's the top of the mountain. Makoto saw the top of Tianqing Mountain. Ash. Soji said. Takuya. Xiao I said. Takuya and Ash took out the rainbow feathers, and the strong rainbow beams emitted by the feathers shot directly to the crystal on the top of the mountain, instantly lighting up the entire mountain. When the rainbow flower on the rainbow rock blooms, Ho-Oh will appear. Fan Ye said, looking at the rainbow. I can't wait any longer. Ash said excitedly, let's go, Pikachu. Everyone hurriedly followed. Fan Ye looked at the backs of the young people, stroked his beard and smiled. Time flies, rainbows are fleeting, young men, hurry up. After that, he ran to catch up. When they reached the top of the mountain, the rainbow rock was emitting light. Do you want to put the feather on it? Said Soji. Ash, let's go. Takuya said to Ash. Yeah. Ash nodded. The two of them ran towards the rainbow rock with the rainbow feather, but suddenly an incineroar jumped out from behind the rainbow rock, releasing the ultimate move throat chop in his hand hitting Takuya and Ash in front of them, knocking them back, and Cross came out from behind the rainbow rock with Lycanroc. Cross, what do you mean by this? Ash stood up and asked. You two hand that over, and I, the strongest trainer, will fight against Ho-Oh. Cross shouted. You are wrong, said Soji. That's right, only the chosen rainbow hero can fight Ho-Oh. Makoto said with a fist. How naive, only the strong can be the truth. Cross said disdainfully. What about the weak people? Ash asked. It's trash. Cross replied. What about the people who lost the battle? Ash continued to ask. Not even as good as trash. Cross said. Sure enough, I still can't lose to someone like you. Ash gritted his teeth. Then I want to ask you how to explain your loss to me in the battle. Takuya said lightly. I was careless that time. Cross said Solacean. I see, if others lose to you, they are worse than trash, and if you lose, you are careless, easy to explain, in this case, I will convince you. Takuya took out the Pokemon ball, but Ash stopped Takuya. Takuya, leave this guy to me. Ash said, it's also my explanation to Charmeleon. Takuya took back the Pokemon ball and walked back to Xiao Ai. Don't let me clean up your mess if you lose later. Ash wiped his nose, 
Don't worry, I won't. The rainbow feathers lit up, and Marshadow emerged from the shadows. You are. Marshadow. Ash said. It's the Pokemon I saw that night. Soji said. I didn't expect it to be so cute. Xiao I said. Maiko also responded. Marshadow jumped up high and stood on the cliff, looking down at everyone. It seems that Marshadow plans to watch the game until the end. Fanyi walked up and said. In that case, Charmeleon, it's decided to be you. Ash put away the rainbow feathers and threw out the Pokemon ball. The battle was about to start. Incineroar, Flamethrower. Cross commanded. Charmeleon, go ahead, slash. Ash shouted. Charmeleon rushed straight to Incineroar, stepped on the rock wall to avoid Flamethrower, and then slash attacked Incineroar directly, causing damage. Throat chop. Cross ordered. Charmeleon jumped back three times in a row to avoid Incineroar's throat chop, and then slash attacked to take the throat chop, and the two sides were evenly matched. Flamethrower. Cross shouted. Incineroar pushed Charmeleon away, and instantly fired Flamethrower from his waist, pushing Charmeleon back further. Charmeleon made a cross with his hands to resist the flames. Charmeleon. Ash called Charmeleon. Charmeleon screamed in the flames, and the flames on its tail instantly grew larger. Its body began to produce the light of evolution. Charmeleon's body became larger, tentacles grew on its head, and wings grew on its back. It successfully evolved into Charizard. After the evolution was completed, Charizard sprayed a mouthful of flame towards soaring in the sky. It evolved into Charizard. Ash shouted happily. Just as everyone was happy that Charmeleon evolved into Charizard, Cross said, I said that even if it evolved, the weak guy would still be weak, Incineroar, throat chop. Charizard, slash. Ash commanded. Charizard screamed, flapped his wings and rushed towards Incineroar. Slash and Throat Chop attacked each other alternately, and finally punched each other before retreating. Flamethrower. Cross said. Charizard flew into the sky and avoided Flamethrower. Dragon Rage. Ash shouted. Charizard turned around and used Dragon Rage to hit Incineroar directly, but it didn't cause much damage. Incineroar just shook his head and stood up. Charizard, a protracted battle is not good for us. Save your strength and decide the outcome in one go when the opportunity comes. Ash clenched his fist and said to Charizard. Charizard nodded to confirm Ash's order. Incineroar, Fire Fang. Cross seized the opportunity to attack. Avoid. Ash shouted. Charizard turned sideways, avoided Incineroar's Fire Fang, and flew in the air for a circle. Pull it down. Cross ordered. Seismic toss. Ash shouted. Ash was waiting for this opportunity. Incineroar sprinted and jumped, hugged Charizard flying in the air and tried to pull Charizard back to the ground, but Charizard grabbed Incineroar's arm, pulled Incineroar off his body, and used Seismic Toss, throwing Incineroar to the ground, causing huge damage. Incineroar, Flamethrower. Cross shouted. Charizard, Flamethrower. Ash shouted as well. The two strong flames collided, but Charizard's Flamethrower gradually gained the upper hand, and then suppressed it with even stronger power. Go! Ash shouted. Charizard's huge flames engulfed Incineroar, creating a strong explosion. Charizard fell in front of Ash, panting. On the other hand, Cross's Incineroar had lost his ability to fight. We won, Charizard. Ash said, touching Charizard. Cross couldn't accept this outcome, and knelt down on his knees in tears, taking back Incineroar. Takuya, let's go! Ash said to Takuya. The battle was over, and it was time to put the rainbow feather on the rainbow rock. The two walked slowly over. When they passed by Cross, Cross suddenly said, I have also seen Ho-Oh, but I couldn't get the rainbow feather. I obviously did everything I could to become the strongest trainer. Why is it you? Since Ho-Oh doesn't agree that I am the strongest, I will defeat Ho-Oh. Cross roared. Cross, I also want to become stronger, but after working together with everyone to come here, I understand that fighting is not just for becoming stronger. Ash turned around and advised. Then what are you fighting for? Cross shouted. That's. I want to be friends with them. Ash said his thoughts. Not just Ho-Oh, I want to be friends with all Pokemon, that's my battle. Cross said nothing, and suddenly moved, trying to snatch Ash's rainbow feather. Takuya saw this and pulled Ash over, but what he didn't expect was that Cross's actual target was Takuya's rainbow feather. 
Cross shook and snatched the rainbow feather from Takuya's hand, and then ran quickly towards the rainbow rock. Lucario stepped forward to chase the rainbow feather back but was stopped by Lycanroc. Not good. Fanyi shouted. The rainbow feather lost its luster in Cross's hand and gradually showed a dark color. Cross climbed up the rainbow rock and placed the black feather on the rainbow rock. Come out. Ho oh. Cross shouted. In an instant, when the rainbow rock touched the black feather, a beam of black shot straight into the sky. The energy of black spread all over the Union Mountains. The sky was covered with dark clouds, lightning and thunder, and the originally colorful rainbow rock was gradually infected by black, turning the entire Tianqing mountain into a black land. When the rainbow feather is touched by the evil heart, it will lose its luster. Looking at the black feather, Fan Yi said. What? Cross shouted. Marshadow jumped down from the cliff, used Shadow Punch to catch Cross, and threw Cross out. Lycanroc saw this and caught Cross. Marshadow will block and correct everything. Fan Yi said. Marshadow picked up the black feather, the black beam disappeared, and turned to look at Cross. In that case, I will defeat you too. Cross shouted, Lycanroc, crush claw. Lycanroc rushed towards Marshadow, and Marshadow assist Black's feathers emitted a haze that covered Lycanroc. Lycanroc's originally red eyes turned black and purple, and turned to attack his trainer Cross. Fortunately, Cross reacted quickly and dodged. Lycanroc, what's wrong with you? Cross shouted loudly at Lycanroc. What's going on? Chung Ji asked. It was controlled by Marshadow. Fan Yi looked at Lycanroc who was attacking Cross and said, in order to alienate humans and Pokemon. Lycanroc fired another black rock bullet at Cross, and at the critical moment, Charizard came out to block it. Cross shrank his pupils and looked at Charizard. You. Because it hasn't forgotten that you were its trainer. Chung Ji said. This guy is such a Pokemon. Ash said. Charizard glanced at Cross and turned his head away proudly. Marshadow released more haze, controlling wild Pokemon one after another, and the controlled wild Pokemon began to attack Takuya and others. Marshadow wants to get rid of all of us. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.